You guys, we fucked up. We stopped recording our podcast and the world ended. Because oh, we ran no. out of... Now what are we going to do? Aaron's Don't worry, we'll fix it. Link Gathered friends. Listen to... Wait, wrong podcast. Yeah, we, we, we caused the coronavirus by ending our podcast. It's true. There's a 100% causal link. Yeah, but... <laughs> So I think that I think that clearly what we need to do is draw from the hat of Josie's interests and and start a new show. Uh mm. let's let's draw from the hat. Let's see. Uh b- b- breast enlargement fetish. No, not that. We're, we can't we can't stretch that to a whole podcast. Oh, you sure? Uh, I mean, could try. you underestimate my power. I'm pretty you know sure what? I've this... been on a podcast where that was the topic. You know what? This hat, this whole hat, is full of fetishes. How about we just, how about we just draw from a, from a, from a deck of, uh, of cards? Um, Children's playing uh, cards. Oh, the, the, the dark the blue eyes white dragon. The blue eyes white dragon. That's a rare card. That's just big enough to be <sighs> a blue eyes white dragon. <sighs> a rare card. <laughs> Screw the rules! I have green hair because the animators were colorblind. Shut up, Mokuba. <laughs> I am? Okay. Holy shit! Are we doing Yu-Gi-Oh? Yes, we yes. are. We're doing all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Starting I'll go, with the bad I'll, because that I'll go grab my cards! We've ever uh, had, but at uh, least we're splitting it up. Yeah. Uh, I, as someone who's already watched all the way to Zexel, this <laughs> is like... Uh, <laughs> How long did I it like, take I, you, Joe? Well, I watched Zexel as it was airing. And I watched GX not as it was airing. <laughs> I'm here. Like, season zero I, wasn't season. So I'm just want to put it right out here. Season zero wasn't too bad. I liked it. No, it was it was epic. I, every time yeah. the banger theme came on, do 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 whatever the that theme. I is. hate that this show never got an official soundtrack release. Yeah. Oh, this show never got an official. This this show apparently got a VHS release and nothing else ever again. They yep. they barely they only the only time they ever acknowledge it is is uh non specific homages in the Dual Monster series, and yeah, I would like I get stuff like Dark Master Zork, <laughs> so, ice rolling based effect which sucks. Actually, it's uh, terrible. Don't use. I want to say Zork. the fucking I, this du- this sub was overall pretty decent. I think I don't know the actual <laughs> translation, but. I happen to know that Zork is not called Zuku in any form. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, I, I somehow... Name, I think. Yeah, it's I Zork. somehow... That's just like a I romanization. Doubt, They're like yeah. saying Zorku. Yeah. I somehow... And I somehow doubt that either Dark Bakura or Zork would call the protagonists you guys. <laughs> Well, okay, no, what what he said was, um, what, what, what was the exact word he used? It, it was like, um, oh, I, I don't know, it, it basically does translate to you guys, like, uh, I remember. It's, it's still kind of, like, the fucking, a good Look, dub takes context into account, it doesn't just do a direct translation. So we're just yeah. skipping ahead, so we're just skipping into rather. the- Well, good so dubs do skip- that too. <laughs> so we're just good skipping editor. ahead to the- a so we're just skipping ahead shit. to the finale, no, not, not explaining any of this. Josie. <laughs> we already reached the last episode, fastest podcast ever. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Right, that's a wrap, everybody. Dark, dark Master Zork. <laughs> I summon the unstoppable Exodia, the legendary defender. Oh no, we have to we have to summon the start of the show first. So okay. Uh, what we Obelisk, the Tormentor! But we, already, but, but we already played the start of the show, it was just in face-down mode. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nibiru, the well. Primal Being, which is not a card that was ever in the anime. I think it only is in the card game. Well, I, I'm gonna I activate wanna, this card's wanna... effect, which is uh, introducing what the hell this show is. <laughs> oh, right, so, um, there's a kid with spiky hair, and he kills people... With child with children's games, yes, this is true. This is true. Except in the, except in the anime where he doesn't kill; he just mind fucks them. Mm-hmm. Well, he apparently, well he's a, so apparently, what he does is he sends them to hell 
in the in the manga, which he kills them and mind fucks them. I mean, I guess, but it's like there are certain things in like there was an episode, there was a part of the manga that was entirely cut where he duels a guy on a giant barbecue or something like that, and he gets bur- he just he he ends up getting so fucked that he just gets doused in acid. Liam, oh. and this he one very season- clearly dies. This Liam, is they very epic. I'm they sad cut, they so they, the fucking the fucking guy with the vodka in the restaurant. He actually yep. got set on fire in the manga. Yep. They mm. cut and skipped. Yeah. They cut and skipped a lot here to make it fit in the one season they were budgeted for. And I think they did a pretty good job. But uh, yeah, so in the manga, Yugi Dark Yugi does kill people <laughs> and the send them to a personalized hell. Spawn of Satan. <laughs> and se- he kills people and sends them to a personalized hell. Here, he just sends them to the personalized hell. They're not technically dead, but they might as well think they are. Yeah. But you know what? You know what else is epic, though? Mm-hmm. In the first episode, we saw. Oosh, we can't wait till we get to 5Ds and we can try to put together the timeline of how Ushio is alive and. What yep. Somehow. Somehow. I'm not, the sure antag- ca- I'm not sure who exactly we're referring to here. The antagonist from the first episode. The guy. The, the guy oh. with the the guy wearing the Nazi armband who beat who beat the crap out of Yugi's friends? Question He's mark. In 5Ds. Yes. He is in five Ds. <laughs> it is canonical. That okay. He's so at first character. it seems. At first it seems that they just reuse the character model. But no, apparently it is canon. That's the guy from the first episode of the of of <laughs> well, well, no, from the first installment of all of Yu-Gi-Oh. The guy who beat the crap out of Yugi's friends? Question mark. <laughs> well, okay. Why did you? Let, let's let Curtis do his thing, and then we can talk oh, about that. F- Wait, what? So, we haven't yet? No. <laughs> Fuck! We're bad at this. I'm so sorry. what? So what you can really tell none of us have left our house for months, right? Indeed. Yo, uh, so. I went to the fucking variety store yesterday when we beat the Ender Dragon in Minecraft to get some. Candy. I went to the regular. Well, I went to the regular. That apparently the variety store was closed and had been so for two months, <laughs> and I'm just like, I okay, clearly then. haven't been here in a very long time. I went okay, to the grocery store important. and bought. S- I went to the grocery store just to buy soda. Curtis, you do whatever it is you do. I'm gonna be a cat. I went to the torrent no. store and bought all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, that's with epic. no money. That's that's pretty epic. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. exactly how much. That's exactly how much money it costs to watch season zero because you can't. Yeah, yeah, unless you can track down a VHS of this, there's no other way um, to watch it. Appar- uh, apparently, they're so rare that little Cre- little Kribo says that the only reason he's only made three episodes and a movie of you of season zero abridged is because he cannot find raw video of anything but the fir- but those first three episodes in the movie. Wow. wow. Apparently, cool. those so apparently those VHSs are very rare, and it's. Like there, there are apparently variety of reasons. I used to, I used to think, oh, it's because of the violence. But no, season zero, it's super toned down next compared to the manga, and we have the manga. So hmm. I think that the, I think that the, so there's two reasons. One, that this anime was produced by a different production company than the Duel Monsters anime, and also hmm. Yugi's voice actress is a pop star and. I guess Japan yeah, has. Say it's probably a combination of Toei Animation being Toei Animation, limited release, and legal yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah I, don't think, I don't think Toei can sell this legally, so they they just it sits on it now. Yeah. yeah. So there's probably even deeper legal issues, considering that the property itself was owned by Bandai at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and now it's, it's owned real... by Konami, and yeah. It's really weird. It's really weird. Uh, you would think that... So apparently Yu-Gi-Oh! is technically the most the most successful card game of all time. I don't know how they beat out Magic, but they did, apparently. And, uh... Yeah! Apparently, all the money in the... In, all the money in the world isn't enough to reobtain the rights to this shit and put it up. Well, 
I don't for think sale. it's that they don't want I don't think it's that they can't obtain the rights, it's that they don't want to, because most of it isn't even canon anymore. I mean, no. Mm. Uh, a lot of it is a lot of it is in the manga. Yeah, okay. I mean so the, the, wasn't the, the manga con- also rebooted though? Uh no, no. yes. Mm. <laughs> Not really, kind of. It's weird. It's, it's like this thing. Case it's like in this, point. It's, it's like this weird thing where everything we just watched in season zero does happen technically in the. It happens in the manga, you know, but slightly different. And then everything in series two that isn't filler happened in the manga. So technically, no, it, it's not rebooted, but it's okay. also yeah. different. All right. So basically, ev- so basically, Yugi, Yugi and his friends were just going along their happy day playing a different game every couple of days. Uh, and murdering someone, and then suddenly the entire world had always revolved around card games forever. Like yeah, it was yeah. like a co- it was like a cosmological retcon, almost like yeah. almost like the card game was the most popular thing about the manga. So they had to retool the whole yeah. damn franchise, except yeah, for the one, except for that okay, one time please. that four kids specifically commissioned an entire mini series around fucking capsule monsters. <laughs> oh, but like, yeah. but also, also but also. Game? Every yeah, time, yeah, every time they play a game that right. isn't Dual Monsters in the Dual Monsters anime, they the the, the all of the monsters are from are from Dual Monsters. Yeah, they don't okay. they don't even bother. So yes, they Capsule Monsters was a real game. You could purchase it when it came out back in the day. You can't anymore. Mm, okay. It was even released in the U.S. So. You know, yep. I mean, I would it. hope it was released in the U.S. Considering that the series was specifically commissioned by four kids, there wasn't even a Japanese version of it. That mm-hmm. is the yeah. trippiest statement I have ever heard with my uh, with my eyeballs. That's not how yeah, you do that. That was specifically an American thing. It's and Mokuba was Son- and Mokuba wasn't even in that. It's very similar to Sonic X, where Sonic X is third. Third season was also commissioned by four kids. It's so Japanese. Awesome. That, yeah. that makes it's, a lot of sense now. There is so a Japanese fucking... dub of Sonic X for it's, season it's three, just, but it's it was so... only released in China or some meme. I mean, honestly, thing. not to like get off track, but I like that they tried to do something different with season three of Sonic X because the first two seasons were just fucking Sonic Adventure. I Curtis, guess well, that, that was the second season. The first season was all original stuff. Curtis, when we're done when we're done with Yu-Gi-Oh and what we're doing in October, we should do Sonic next. Oh, we should totally do the Sonic comics. Uh, yeah, mainly, we're talking I, about already that. Told, I already mentioned the Dude, Sonic that's... comics on Twitter after I found out that fucking Sonic Man is a recurring character. <laughs> okay. Yep. But 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 what I yeah. So um something I really liked is I really like every time Yugi beat the shit out of someone. Pretty great. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, sh- should we just like introduce who we are? Because not oh all of us. Oh my god! How long are you even introduced? Yeah, it's probably we, a good should idea. We just redo the whole introduction and just like, no. Just, here's no. What we do. Here's here's what we do. Here's what we do. We do the introduction. Mm. No. Then we cut that and move it to the beginning of the recording, and nobody will know the difference. But now you just said it, so everyone. Gamers on the calendar. Gamers rise up. <laughs> Okay, so I My name's Chip. Josie my name's Josie and I'm a cat. This is Curtis, he's a cat. James yes. is a cat, Why Liam's a cat. Always interrupt. <laughs> Whipples Whipples is a cat. We're all cats. Everybody's I a cat, no one knows cat. why. I'm allergic to cats. Well well um, that fish and fi- well that seahorse and finding Nemo is allergic to water, so how does that work? I what? There's a seahorse and finding Nemo that's allergic to H two O. Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> it's uh, it's real bad. It's like being allergic to uh, oxygen, which some people are. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, I am Chip. I'm I, I guess the host of these things. So uh, hi. Uh, I do not know much about Yu-Gi-Oh. I've seen maybe like ten episodes of Jewel. Well, you'll know throughout you'll, my life. Don't worry. You'll know just about as much as uh, as anyone can in a couple weeks. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, who else we got? I don't know all the rules to the game, but... I, I will introduce myself now. My name is James. 
if you're here from the Bionicle fandom, you might know me from last season. And if you're here from the Yu-Gi-Oh fandom, you might know me from nothing. Cool. <laughs> Joe, you go next because okay. you're, you're 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 the ringleader of of uh, you you uh, you uh, one half of Joe Squared, who's now back together technically. Yeah, we are. Anyway, getting the so- gang back together. Jonah was going to be in the last season, but he fucked off to having a life land. So he, it. and now we're never going to see him again. <laughs> we're never going to. He oh, he was always a communist. We're never going to see him again, though. Now he's a really loud communist. He okay. promised. He promised he'd play Minecraft with us, but he's. he's <laughs> but then we realized, oh shit, he's probably going to be hanging out with his family in quarantine. God damn it. Okay, so what I was trying to say was I'm Joe. I probably know more about Yu-Gi-Oh than anyone else here on this channel. No offense to everyone else. <laughs> what do you mean probably? You definitely know more about Yu-Gi-Oh than me. Uh, I know I, more about I, I know more about I know more about Yu-Gi-Oh than Chip, James, or Liam combined. And I don't know anything I know some about Yu-Gi-Oh. James. Well, okay, so so yeah, I've watched. I haven't watched season zero, which is partially why I started this. But I did read the manga, and I have watched season series one. I mean series two, GX, five Ds, Zexel. And get and, and get this, you guys! And get this, you guys! He's actually good at the card game. Yes, I am. I used to play ranked on Dueling Network back in 2011, but eventually I quit because I had to deal with too many assholes, and then. Yeah. Well, now you can just boot up Duel Links and deal with that incredibly oh, deal. nerfed game. And I can play pay to win? No thanks. Hey, there's a Already lot played. of fuck. You get you're getting there's a lot of free shit happening right now. And he, also oh, Yu-Gi-Oh. Really. Also Yu-Gi-Oh in general is kind of pay to win most yeah. most yeah, yeah, that's card that's games. The main problem the main problem say. I have the main problem I have with Duel Links is that it's fucking incredibly nerfed. You can only have, like, five cards in your hand, there are only three mm. monster slots and 4,000 life points, and the metagame like... is entirely different, and it doesn't even have all the monsters! It has only everything up to Ixie's monsters. I actually kind of like the nerfed format, because it's less, uh, watch me, uh, spam my ass off for five minutes, and then set up, <laughs> and then play a bunch of cards that make it so you can't do anything, GG, I, I'm great. I'm, temp- I'm tempted. I'm tempted to ask Curtis to uh, edit everything out of the podcast that isn't about season zero. Uh, what, the the is is an Ix- what, what the Look. fuck is an Ixies? What? What the fuck is an Ixies? So so sorry about all this, but anyway, the point is, yes, I really like Yu Gi Oh, and I I really loved this. It was great to watch. Yeah, and yeah, Liam doesn't need to bother introducing himself because everyone fucking knows who he is. <laughs> I was I was tempted to try and make a joke like that, but I, I hadn't. It, the gears hadn't quite clicked yet. No, no, no. Liam's like the Liam. Liam is the guy running running BMB. He found the Bionicle game. He's good. Well, no, he didn't find it, but he 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 got the credit for it because because uh, JMMB is a shy boy. Oh, it's pretty people. epic. Uh, the, the, yep. the main, the, it's not really like that. I don't even. I half run BMB. JMMB is the other lead admin. He found yes. the game. We streamed it, and then I started Lightstone. Yeah. So basically, yeah. you're the most important person in the world who's not named Christian Faber. <laughs> Damn. There's a whole the other thing silence. to talk about in that regard. <laughs> Okay, we'll talk about that later, because cause yeah. we're not a Bionicle podcast anymore. No, we're not a Bionicle podcast, podcast we are anymore, no you guys. gathered friends. We are now title the gathered, gathered pharaohs. pharaohs. Yeah. A, the word pharaoh, I don't think, was uttered or, in Season Zero at all. Alternatively, if, no, somebody, if somebody had mentioned it before, before yeah. I forget who mentioned it, but somebody mentioned it a while ago, we could have an alternate title, Attention Duelists. Attention, yeah, duelists! My I character know. model is here, but I not me. Work, but I kind of like gathered pharaohs. It's got a me. theme going with it, gathered yeah. friends. I think gathered. I think the title could have just stayed gathered friends because at, because the the four kids dub of Duel Monsters is like 
they talk about friendship a lot. They talk a lot about <laughs> friendship here. They talk a lot about. I've I've watched I've watched and rewatched the entire series of Yu Gi Oh more than I have any other series. They talk about friendship a lot okay. in general. Okay. In uh, any one, language. One more aside before we actually get mm-hmm. into reviewing the series, but I fucking love how they got that whole heart of the cards bullshit from like two sentences in season zero where yes. they say something along the lines of you have to believe the the card the, something along the lines of the cards have a heart or you have to you have to believe in grandpa's it, heart is in that card something like that yeah, yeah. it's like look this look, is, they heart, just, they all heart of the-, the entire show around just like select bits and pieces of the original <laughs> yep all heart of the cards means is respect your game pieces and your game pieces will respect you yes yes because uh, like, so yeah Sorry. It's yeah. just that once, once the sh- now once the I entire will say, in the initial fight against Kaiba, the thing that happened to Blue Eyes was kind of bullshit. But we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. So yeah. I think we should begin it's by like... saying, uh, you know, the general structure of this show. So apart from JoJo, episode... what? No, <laughs> it's what? Okay. JoJo Part Four. Okay, That's so okay. What, okay, so but, okay, so a, an average episode of season zero will start with Yugi playing a game like like Jenga or some shit. He doesn't play Jenga at all in this, but okay, but like he's he's playing with a <laughs> he's playing with a puzzle. He's playing with a puzzle. He's playing with a puzzle. He's playing with a puzzle or something, and then someone shows up and asks him about it, and he explains it to them. And the audience, and then some, and then the antagonist shows up and is like, "I don't believe in friendship." And then Yugi, go, and then Yugi turns into Satan and uh, and mur- and murders him in an ironic saw puzzle. The the, the way yeah. I described it before is like it's villain of the day with slice of life. It's JoJo Part Four, where the main protagonist is Darby Junior combined with Calypso. Yeah, the, the 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 way I see it is that the first, you know, 18 to 20 minutes of every episode is someone coming along and just shitting all over Yugi and sometimes his friends. But the episodes are only 20 minutes? No, they're 24. The oh, last well, five well. minutes of the show is, is <laughs> Yugi turning into dark Yugi and then killing them. <laughs> And you mentioned you mentioned Darby. Uh, there is a character named Gozuboro Kaiba. It's it's Seto Kaiba's dad, and uh, he's he's modeled very closely to Darby, wouldn't you say? Oh, well, there are other Darbies it, in this game too, and I have the or in yeah. the show, and I have them in my notes. <laughs> there are lots like, of there are like three different characters that qualify as Darby in this show. Well, yeah, Since I'm thinking about it. Did did Kaiba's dad? die because he just kind of falls over and then we never uh, see it, him okay, again okay so in the original we'll, we'll manga... get there we'll get oh, yeah, there okay yeah okay so the first so the first uh the first episode is about yuki having this puzzle and then mm-hmm. some school bullies show up and we're like oh your puzzle's so stupid let do it. uh yeah so uh i mean basically as josie was saying yeah yuki's got this puzzle he got it from his grandpa who got it from uh, someone else like an archaeologist who got it from egypt and uh, yeah, it's it's the Senen puzzle or the Millennium puzzle for you non weebs out there. Uh, and it's it's really tough. No one can ever put it together except Yugi. Just does because he's he's cool. <laughs> um, well, no, it doesn't. Because destiny and whatever. Junichi stole one of the pieces. Yeah, yeah. Freaking freaking Joey Jonochi. Uh, you know. Yeah, Joey was like bada he's, boom, he's, bada bing. He stole not only the not only one of the pieces, but the central piece. The like, if he had stolen any other piece, like some random fucking rectangle, then Yugi would have just thought, oh, I must have put the, the puzzle that r- together wrong. No, he stole the main piece, so Yugi definitely knows it's missing. Yeah. <laughs> Joey was all like, I want to teach this kid to be a man. This kid who hasn't even gone through puberty yet, so really... I am a go- man! I like, how kid- Joey, I like how Yugi just is inexplicably like a child. Despite being 16, like, somehow he's the latest bloomer ever. It's the yeah, exact yeah. opposite of most, like, anime tropes, where you have, like, 18-year-olds and whatever that are just these plain, scrawny characters, and then you have fucking Jotaro. 
<laughs> every with, almost without every hour of friendship his his growth was stunted for the first 16 <laughs> years of his life damn this is this is so sad yep so yeah like uh so there's a, so yugi has these bullies joey and tristan or as they're called here i don't care Jonochi uh, and, Jun- and Toyota, yes. Jonochi <laughs> uh, and Jonochi and, Sh- and Chevrolet. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, okay, that's just going to be the theme. Every time you mention him, you have to call him by a different car brand name. Oh, Challenge. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm going to run out of cars. And remember, I'm gonna run out- this is a shadow game. <laughs> I'm going to run out of cars pretty quick. Okay, what's my punishment going to be? <laughs> punishment game. Okay. You got to tell me what the punishment's going to be na- up front. You, That's how it works. Okay. You know, Robert, No, we don't. You learn when it's over. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'll. Okay. So, so Joey and Subaru. Uh, they, 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 they like. Uh, well, they sort of bully Yugi, but not really. And then this guy, who's apparently like the class. Bodyguard, security he's guard, a, hall he's monitor. The, yeah, he's dressed exactly like a Nazi. He's yes, a hall he's monitor. A and hall monitor. <laughs> he's the hall monitor and the Nazi, and everyone loves him for some reason. That's weird. And uh, he beats the crap out of Joey and te- te- uh, te- Tesla. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, he beats the crap out of them. And then he's all, and then he extorts Yugi for money. He's like, "Hey, I beat up those guys that were kind of mean to you, but not a whole, not enough to justify beating the crap out of them. You owe me two hundred dollars." Yeah. And then, and then Yugi's all like, "No, I don't." And then the guys all like, "Fair enough. Right, Have a nice day." And then he just stands in place in front of the school, hoping Yugi will show up with money. And then at some point, Yugi realizes, oh, crap, I don't have... I, I must have left this puzzle piece at home. No, spoilers, Joey threw it in the lake. Um, or river, or whatever. And so yeah. he shows up at the school where the guy is, because he just lives there, I guess. Uh, and uh, the guy's are like, hey, you have my money? And like, no, I just left I just left a, a thing. And then, he beats, and then he beats him up. And then Joey shows up, and he beats him up. And then, you, and then Joey gives him the puzzle piece that he fished out of the lake. And then, and then, then Yugi becomes cool. Then, then Yugi becomes I, dark Yugi or Yami Yugi. Or in a, in a strange, in a strange turn of events, the Japanese want term is the term used in English and vice versa because inverse weeb. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the Yami the, is the like ja- oh, it's like it's game time, and, and the, so they do yeah, card you- thing that. I still don't understand the rules of <laughs> yeah, Japan. Like kind, of. Japan, kind, Japan kind of likes English, and English kind of likes, and America kind of likes Japanese. So sometimes we just use each other's shit. Anyway, uh, so uh, it reminds the, me of this this meme I saw back a while ago. It's like, what if a Jap a, a, a Japanese person just had a random <laughs> English phrase? tattooed on them like we do Japanese phrases and there's just a picture of someone who actually did it and it's like it just says like penis or something <laughs> anyway so uh, if I remember correctly in the manga the game the shadow game that he plays with Ushio is just we put money on our hands and stab our hands and whoever has the most money wins here uh, it's some complicated like like hangman but with real life and also poker cards because Yugi was playing, like, Yugi okay, was okay, playing okay. solitaire earlier, I guess, or building a card pyramid or something. I don't know what the fuck. I, I, I did not could... understand any of the shadow games. Okay, a lot. I of mean, I I tend games. to understand a lot of them, but just not this one. Yeah, this one's like I don't understand what he was doing, and also he throws the cards and they like stick to the wall. I I don't <laughs> know how he does that. He's I know magic. he's magic. I know he's magic. How does he do anything that he does? Okay, so he does it because so all the millennium all the millennium items do have special powers in addition to being able to hold souls and possess people, but the millennium puzzle's power is never acknowledged by anyone at any at any time. What the millennium puzzle does is what Jollers Mask does in 2006. It 
it, the Millennium Puzzle can manipulate probability, and it's kind of passive, so and no one... So what you're saying is, if there was ever a chance that somehow these cards would stick to the wall, they now will. Yeah. Yep. And it's <laughs> passive... you the protagonist. And, yep. And the ability is passive, and nobody knows about it, including the people who know all the shit. Shadi doesn't know about it, Bakura doesn't know about it. No one knows about it. Not even not, Yugi. Dark Yugi doesn't even know about it. Nobody knows that this whole time Yugi is just cheating his ass off all the time. <laughs> but also, it only works. It only works while he's super confident in himself. That's the trigger. So whenever he, whenever he's bad at a game, it's because he doesn't believe in himself. <laughs> basically, okay. So you know, basically, the way that anime works. Those are the actual powers of the Millennium Puzzle. Okay. Like that, just the way, anim- just all of the anime tropes you've ever seen, th- those are the powers of the Millennium Puzzle. Fair you enough. Wear it, you're the, you wear it, you're the protagonist. Unless, you're, unless your hair isn't spiky enough. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's uh, what so, so the guy weird. tries to cheat at the card game, and then uh, Yamayuki's like, oh, the door to darkness is opened. Fuck you. And, and only I am allowed- the- Only I am allowed to cheat, fucko! Yeah. <laughs> Penalty game! And yeah. Then he, th- then he thinks all the leaves are money, and that's, that, that's Ushio until 2007, when- <laughs> Suddenly he's a- Suddenly he's a security guard in the future. Yeah. Sure. Or a cop or something. <laughs> He's a cop. Uh, I get maybe being in a shadow game makes you gives you grants you eternal youth. I don't know. Or those giant <laughs> fucking wor- or those giant worms points. were just portals to the future. I mean, no, because he didn't physically teleport. He, he like at the end of the episode, we see him. He's just still there at the school, writhing in agony. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. It's so weird. And then the second episode is about burgers. Oh, hold on, before, before we get onto the second episode, there's a couple more main characters we haven't talked about yet who get pretty much introduced right at the end of the first episode. Uh, yeah, what's her face? Yeah, what's her face and different what's her face? So we got Anzu slash Taya and Mio. Mio slash who nobody, is... because she's literally just. It... Apparently, she was like a one off character in the manga, but whoever. Yeah, okay. Okay, so here's. You know what? I want this character to be a recurring character right up until the fucking end. Okay, so you know that. So you know that. So you know that there's this episode later on where. A char- where a a character just randomly shows up and wants to and wants to uh, confess her love to Joey, and it turns out that in the manga that was actually about Tristan wanting to pro- wanting to confess his love to a back to a one off character named Miho, and that's right, who, where she uh, came oh, from. In this, are you talking about Chevrolet here? Yes. Who? The door to darkness has opened. Penalty uh, game! And then, oh no! I am Joe, suddenly unable to call myself a cat for 30 minutes! <laughs> That's the worst hell. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. I don't know what... But I, I would really like to know, like, the fucking, um... The, uh... Popularity contest episode. How was that handled in the manga when Miho didn't exist? Because that was basically an episode completely revolving around her. I can't even remember that episode. And then there's the Capsule Monsters episode, which was also entirely revolving around her. Hmm. Let me look this shit up, because I don't even remember. Um, I I would assume they just went off like a character of the week model, and those characters got shafted for the anime and replaced with Miho. Yep. I, I think the I think the reason Either that they that or it have revolved around Taya. That would be my guess. I think yeah. the reason okay. I think the re- I, I think right. the reason I think the reason they brought Miho in to be a regular character on this show was so that Tristan would have more to do. Okay, so that episode <laughs> with uh, the episode eleven. Sorry, skipping ahead for Capsule Monsters was originally Mokuba dueling. It was originally Mokuba playing him the first time, and then it was a rematch later on. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Mokuba uh, because wasn't introduced until Death T until the uh, in season zero. Yeah, but in yeah. the manga, in the manga, 
the the guy that Yugi plays with Capsule Monsters, yeah, that guy's uh, original character. Do not steal. Yes, uh, and I'm pretty sure the beauty contest is also that way. But I have. Yep. To well, it's it. also Mokuba. Huh. No, no. Until it, 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 it did not <laughs> exist, is what I meant. But sure, I mean, there. Know, I mean, there was an every change of in the, the anime was originally Mokuba. <laughs> Everything is Mokuba! Everything is cool when you have hair! But yeah, fucking Miho, it's like, yeah, she gives Tristan something to do. But at the same time, that's literally the extent of her character. She basically just exists to give Tristan something to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's basically she has like... absolutely no character throughout the entire show except for okay. those two episodes. It's Other like than talk- that, she's just there. All right, so Kazuki Takahashi created a very pointless character, and the anime thought, and the Toei thought, okay, well, this character, like, he's not important at all, but Kazuki Takahashi thinks he is, so I guess what we can do is we can take his love interest from this one manga, from this one episode, make her a regular character. She doesn't really have a personality, though. So, basically, to make one useless character have more to do, they introduce another useless character. It's like, it's like the voodoo, it's like a voodoo shark, but boring. I mean, if you consider how fucking Duel Monsters picks and chooses various things from Season Zero in the manga to make the entire focus of entire arcs, this is just par for the course at this point. Yeah, yeah it's great. Right. Right. I love it. I, I love it. it up. I had to look it up, but I, I figured because I don't remember this shit. Yeah, they made it up. But yeah, <laughs> so until until Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist, which is what the manga is called when it's all it becomes nothing but card games from yeah, then yeah, on out. Yeah, basic like, uh, like until du- until Duelist, every single game Yugi plays, he only plays with one person. Yeah. So, so every like, time he pl- every time he plays Capsule Monsters, it's with Mokuba. Every time he plays Duel Monsters. It's with Kaiba, or Kaiba is involved somehow. Well, the 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 the, the, the minions that Kaiba summons in this also are from only the anime. I I knew Ex- that. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Every everything, everything that's not everything that involves the card game that isn't Kaiba is pulled from whole cloth. Because uh, yeah, the, this. The, Oh, sorry. In the manga, Yugi only plays his games with one person. So, specifically, going back to that, series zero or season one, series season one goes all the way to series two. You you guys all saw Exodia in the twenty fourth episode. So, oh. you can Exodia. Just watch- no one's that that card exists. Yes. So basically, you can watch this and then go straight to series two, and you've only missed like two. Like chapters in the manga, you you really don't miss much. So well, there's at the same time there's also like you can skip some episodes of the Duel Monsters because like the entire the entire battle between the the, the, the first couple episodes of seasons of season zero and the last couple episodes of season zero are all covered within the first arc of Duel Monsters, so there's overlap. I like, uh, I appreciate Kaiba comes the, in. Uh, Kaiba steals Blue Eyes. They skip right ahead to Yugi fighting Kaiba for Blue Eyes, and then summoning Exodia at the same so, time because they merged those two battles. I guess there. Yeah, so there's did. an a, there's an actual dual Mo- Yu-Gi-Oh card of Dark Master Zork, and I used to think it was really stupid that its effect was that well, the way it was, but then I saw that. But then I watched it. I watched Monster World for the first time, and I'm like. I appreciate that card so much more now because they took Dark Master Zork's card effect from the from these episodes. It still he does it, he does exactly what he does here. But again, yes. we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Sorry. We'll get there. Bakura doesn't show up until the last few episodes. Anyway, so what where were we at episode two? Are we not? Well, so yeah, technically, we were about to go into episode two, but I mean, do we have so, anything uh, to say about it really? Hammerers. I don't even remember what happens in this. I one. I think okay. it's hilarious. I think it's a hilarious comedy of errors that that guy just wants to be a master criminal and some Maybe guy keeps sniping his shit instead of constantly skipping ahead and interrupting Josie. 
Okay, you, so I'm, there's I'm egg in the hamburger. Two. That's all you need to know. You just give me to the yeah, end of episode two. Okay. So okay, there's a guy who likes hamburgers and stealing shit, and his he's allergic his, to eggs. His love of hamburgers gets in the way of his love of stealing shit. The end. Yeah. So then also the end, also the lighters. End, yes. At the end, he tries to hold up the thing while Yugi and his friends are there. Bad idea. Penalty game. And then they play a game, and you get. He lights himself on fire, and there you go. If That's I it. was, if I was, a, if I was an antagonist in Yu-Gi-Oh, and I saw Yugi, I would just fucking run. Well, and I that is no exactly okay. Okay, at that's this gonna point, happen. No one knew who he was. Yeah, by the yeah. by the time by the time Battle City rolls around, there are there are actually people who once they realize they're playing with Yugi, they run the fuck away. Yeah, he's a they long way from becoming the king of games at this point. <laughs> The title! I always thought it was weird that Yugi becomes called the king of oh. games at, for winning a card game. But then I found out, oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! the manga was about other games. Yes. For like the name Yu-Gi-Oh! Chapters. actually means king of games. Yes. For oh! Little... Yes. Yugi's parents really just named him Gamer, huh? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. They literally did, yes. Well, yeah, games are in their blood, basically. Oh, I know they did. Is a, Yugi is an epic gamer. He's going to rise up against the government, media, and corporations and defeat society, etc. Oh, it's I, ironic. I, I know what the thumbnail's going to be now. I, I know what the thumbnail's going to be now. It's going to be Yugi wearing the gamer hat from Sonic Forces. <laughs> How? I thought you were going to say it was going right. to be Yugi, but shopping is fucking face to be white and his hair I, to be green. You can do both. Joker makeup. Jo Joker makeup and gamer hat. And then no one will recognize Yugi because the most recognizable thing about him is his ridiculous hair that won't fit in any hat. <laughs> How does Yugi his... wear hats? Yeah, we never I see his hair. We never see Yugi wearing hats. Ever. You just glue it to his forehead. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe so he can only wear like Jotaro's hat because it only okay, comes with the front. Okay, so uh, okay, so you know how most people will use hair gel to get their hair in weird shapes. Yugi just uses fucking glue. Yeah, he <laughs> uses he uses a uh, you know liquid cement. That's how yeah, he uses glue, liquid cement, just all the adhesives. He wanted to have super special, awesome hair, and now he's stuck with it. He can't get rid or of rather, it. Or rather, okay, so it's not that he wanted to have super special, awesome hair. It's that. He's a reincarnation of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh that had super special awesome hair. And everybody ever who's a reincarnation of this guy has to have the same hair. Okay, I'm sorry everyone that we've skipped from episode one to literally the end of series two. Also, dual list of roses. Oh god. Okay. I'm scared. So, did you know, did you know that one of the kings of England, canonically, is a reincarnation of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh? Oh okay. my god, can we just pretend that game doesn't exist? I'm pretty no, sure it's, it's my favorite, it's my favorite thing! <laughs> How can they be a reincarnation of him if he was trapped in the Millennium Puzzle all this time? That's the thing, oh. I don't know. I don't think that's how reincarnation works. No, it's not. I'm, I'm, I am so bothered by this. But the thing is, though, you can't argue with it because Yami, Dark Yugi, that is, he doesn't look that way because he's possessing Yugi. He looks that way because he looks that way. That that is canonically what Yugi looks like once he enters puberty. Yeah, yeah, that is true. We see it. We see him in Yu-Gi-Oh GX a little, and he he just looks like that. Yeah. So wait, wait. Does he's... that apply to the other people with Millennium items as well, like Bakura? Yeah. No. Yeah, no. no. Uh, just Yugi. Oh. Uh, okay. See, Bakura. Bakura doesn't doesn't really change. He just kind of has an intimidating expression on his face. Yeah, he doesn't get any taller. He just becomes evil. Yeah. Okay. His hair looks different. His yeah, hair. Yeah, it's, spiky thing. Spiky, it's spiky more part. the way he wears. It's more the way he wears it. Yugi literally changes into a different guy, who's also the same guy but older. Okay. Kazuki Takahashi wrote the weirdest shit, and I love it's also, it. Also, it's also there's also a very like it's very clear early on that they didn't know what 
they were actually doing with Atem. Because oh, Atem... <laughs> spoilers! He, exist, uh, he clearly didn't exist Who? at this point. He was yeah. just a better version of Yugi. No, it's no, because... So- it's just like Yugi has two souls, but this one yep. unlocks it. The Egypt stuff was always there, so clearly they had, they had, he had some idea what he was doing. I don't know if he intended for, for Yami Yugi to actually be like, a, a the dog, this is what the guy looked like and what he was. No, what, what I'm trying to say is like, it's clear that at this point he wasn't intended to be a completely different person like he would later end up being. Yeah. Because he still has a lot of Yugi's mannerisms, and he still knows who's who his friends are, and everything like that. Yep, yep. And it's so, but at some point, it, at some point, not to mention, it, it just becomes... if, as, as soon as Duel Monsters rolls around, he has a completely different voice actor than Yugi. No, he Whereas doesn't. In this, he's just Yugi, but deeper. Liam, Liam, Dan Green voices both Yugi and not Yugi. No, I meant the yeah. Japanese version. I'm sure it's the same there, too. Yeah. They, they sound very different. Voice actors are very good, Liam. Mm. I, mean, I, really I, 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 thought for, I thought for years that four kids got a different voice for Yugi and Yami Yugi, and then I found out, no, one of them is Dan Green's speaking voice, and one of them is that voice he does in all of his cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> wait, and Dan Green? Wait, wait, hold up. Dan Green sounds like a 12-year-old boy, is that what you're saying? Um, no, it's it's slightly higher pitch than his speaking voice, but it's it's generally what he sounds like, yeah. Okay, that makes more sense, thank you. I thought yeah. you were going to say that Dan Green sounds like old Yugi, and that the other voice is the one he that does. Would be bad. That would be badass. Um, n- no, if you've ever watched any 4Kids anime or played Sonic, oh, Sonic Unleashed, I think is the one Dan Green does his voice in. Uh, it's like, that is the voice that, uh, that four kids just had him do in every cartoon. Right. Yeah, he, he, he think, was Knuckles I, in, in Sonic. Yeah, I think oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is actually like the, I think Yu-Gi-Oh is actually the only four kids anime where he does a different voice. Hmm. Fair enough. We're getting way off track. We're not on Duel Monsters yet. What is Duel Monsters? This game is called Magic and Monsters. Yeah, we're, we're, we're on to the beginning of Magic and Monsters with episode 3, Clash, the Strongest Monster, where yeah. Sekai Kaiba gets introduced. Yeah, and it makes, no, it, it makes no sense why he would come to this school. Because he, he wants seems, to see Yugi. He seems to be surprised that, that Yugi's grandfather has the card he's looking for. Like, mm. I... I I hold, I hold it canon. I don't know if it's really canon or if it's just my head canon, but I believe that Kaiba definitely transferred to this school specifically because he had heard a rumor that a guy had a grandfather who had a blue eyes. I'm not sure if that's presented very well here. That's kind of what I got out of it too, but yeah. yeah. It's like, it, yeah. it, cause like, you, cause like, Yugi's grandfather makes it, you, Yugi, like, people don't even have to look for where Yugi lives. His name is literally the store. Yeah. yeah. And like, if it wasn't clear enough that Yugi and Yu-Gi-Oh! Ga- and Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Shop w- were the same thing, yet yeah, Yugi's name is literally just on the sign outside the door. Because it just means games. Yeah, it just means games. It just means games. It's it's weird. Anyway, so Kaiba has green hair because even though there were colorized versions of the manga at the time, I guess the animators were colorblind. Yeah, they just decided to make him green. Uh, no one knows why, really. Huh. I mean, they, they probably the they same reason they made uh, Joey's sister, uh, uh, yeah, sister, uh, blue-haired as well. Yeah. He's, uh, I he's thought, an original I was, character, do not steal. I thought it was more like Violet or something, yeah. but yeah, uh, I I appreciate right. the I appreciate. So there's a there's a filler arc in Dual Monsters where it, it turns out Kaiba's Kaiba's adopted and his dad had a biological son who was just Kaiba from Season Zero. I've seen a couple episodes of that, actually. My brother but been watching also, it. But also, Kaiba is still adopted in Season Zero, so they're get, they're getting kind of confused here. But anyway, Kaiba is like, 
uh, he's, he's pretending to be really nice, and it's it's really off-putting. And I watched, you, Liam said, bonus points if you watch Season Zero Bridge. I did, and yeah. they run with this the whole episode. Like, Kaiba yeah. being, like, Kaiba being nice is so off-putting, because he still kind of has a deep-ish voice, but he's putting on an act, and he's kind of putting on a voice, like, hey, look at me, I'm not evil at all. I'm, I'm your nice friend. Take, take me, take me to see your grandfather. I totally won't kill him. I'm us. your best friend, Yugi. I'm your best friend, Yugi. And anyway, I so love they, how they, they introduced him just singing the fucking Mister Rogers. <laughs> yep. So when uh, when school ends, they take him to see Yugi's grandfather, and Yugi's grandfather's like, "Oh, I, my best friend, Ar- Arthur Hawkins." Whatever the fuck his name is in Japan. I don't know. He gave me this card, and I really like it. Um, and Kaiba's all like, I will literally buy it for all the money in the world. Give it to me, you dirty old man. And and, and the old man is all like, no, just because I run a store, that doesn't mean I sell things. Oh yeah, speaking of dirty old man, uh, Yuki's oh, grandfather. Yeah. I have that in my notes. He fucking it, it, talks, he fucking, I, like, like, t- Yuki brings his high school crush over to his house because they're best friends, and Yuki's grandpa is all like, I see your breasts have grown. And I, when I saw, when I first watched <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh, Br- Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero Bridge, I was like, wow, what, why did, why did, why did Martin make a boob joke there? That's weird. Oh, no! Nope, nope. <laughs> Completely intentional. I just have that in my notes. It's like, the, the, the first note is just suddenly Millennium Puzzle. The second note, suddenly pedophilia. Uh, this yeah. isn't going to be, this isn't, yeah, that's probably one reason why they haven't released this, because now that Yu-Gi-Oh! is an international brand and one of the best-selling card games of all time, they don't want to acknowledge that at one point, Yugi's grandpa commented on the size of his of of his future daughter-in-law's boobs. I also love how at the like it's not even granddaughter-in-law. Two, not even two minutes into episode two, jo- Joey calls Taya a whore. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is epic. He's rising up. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, having grown up with the dub of Duel Monsters, just within the first two episodes, this show gave me fucking tonal whiplash. <laughs> well, I mean, I, okay, I like it. I'm pretty yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure. I, I I'm pretty sure. In the sub of series two, he also they kept the your boobs get bigger line. <laughs> <laughs> I but fucking I love it. <laughs> So that is not a thing that they ever got rid of. Uh, Hell yeah! Anyway, which makes me wonder if it's in the the uncensored version they did. I can't. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear about Taya's boobs some more. (laughs) (laughs) Especially episode three, Kaiba. Yeah, Kaiba. Yeah. So so so, uh, Yugi have a duel because Kaiba stole the card. Yeah, Kaiba stole a card, and Yugi's all like, well, I was just going to be nice and let you steal the card, but then you kind of stopped being nice, so I'm, like, going to kill you now, or something. Pretty and, you, much. and Kaiba's all like, you can't kill me, I'm the gingerbread man! Screw the monies! I fucked that up real bad. <laughs> anyway, Screw the money, but, I have rules. Yeah, so this is the only time when Yugi doesn't flat out win a game. Or Dark Yugi, anyway. Yugi loses all over the place, but Dark Yugi... Except for the part where apparently fucking Gremlin destroyed Blue Eyes. Uh, yeah, because, uh, even in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh, it wasn't that hard to get, to power up a monster and be stronger than Blue Eyes White Dragon. while we're talking about Blue Eyes, can we acknowledge (laughs) the elephant in the room with this episode? No! That it's called Blue Eyes Dragon? Or something else? (laughs) The, the, the whole heart of the cards thing preventing Blue Eyes from attacking. Oh, Dude, that, that yeah. was epic. That was way better. Look, what would you rather? It destroying itself or I ripped it up because I so it could never be used against me? <laughs> I like that. I like that. I love that, that never line. Ha- he I mean, destroys okay. it in front of him. He's like, so it could never be used against me. I always wondered what... Uh, before what I got the card... For all 
like a week before for like a week before I actually learned how to play the game. When I first saw that, I was like, "Why would you do that?" Then you'd have four blue eyes in your deck, and then I found out, "Oh wait, you can't do that." They never acknowledge the three card limit in the show ever, except in the movie where yeah, it makes no even, sense. Even then, like having just watched the movie, would that evil cha- would evil chains allow you to have four blue eyes on the field if you could no. have four in your deck? No, oh, because maybe, you know, before the movie, the Kaiba, had, Kaiba had summoned Kaiba had summoned three blue eyes on the field at once, many times throughout the show. What did Evil Chains even do exactly? What well, was it? The, the rules do change throughout the show, so yeah, yeah. I have no idea what the fuck Evil Chains does. They never tell I, us. We just know it attaches them together. Okay, so what they what happened was they wanted Red Eyes to be the first fusion card, but they kind of written themselves into a corner because they also wanted Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon to show up. And then they thought, no, what if what if it's just the three Blue Eyes chained together and now they now they have four hundred and fifty attack points? What if it's three fu- Blue Eyes in a trench coat? Fuck it, let's just not acknowledge it. And it's it's really weird. Okay, because polymerization is even a real card. No, it was oh, in the. Surprisingly enough, even though the Yu-Gi-Oh Season Zero movie was officially the first Yu-Gi-Oh product to be a tie-in with the card game, the the first set of cards in the actual real card game that we still play to this day was released as a promo for this movie. For some reason, the cards from the, introduced in this movie exist in other incarnations of the game. It, I don't understand how, why, why does why does Bandai have Wicked Chains as a card? I don't understand. Someone, please help. The branding makes no sense here. <laughs> but dude. You got, you got, um, you got Meteor Dragon. What do you saw Meteor Dragon? I'm like, oh shit, we're gonna get Red Eyes Meteor Dragon. The Red Eyes Meteor Dragon just like, oh shit, and then he, he kills. And it was like, so it was like, really cool. It was really cool. But you want to know what is what? Also, another confusing branding moment. It may, it's re- okay. So the two monsters in re- in polymerization, the fusion card, are Red Eyes Black Dragon, and Summon Skull. Summon Skulls in the movie doesn't fuse with Red Eyes. It makes sense for Red Eyes to be the first fusion. Why not Summon Skull, though? Why Why Meteor Dragon? I don't it's understand. The branding makes no sense! We're getting, oh, well. we're getting off, we're getting off track again. We're getting off track. Yugi hasn't even beaten Kaiba yet. Okay, so y- Yugi's all like, Okay, okay, uh, the, the, the blue eyes, it suddenly has a card effect where it, it, only the owner of the monster can control it. Yeah, and then it, like, it, destroys itself, and then, and then it destroys it itself. With a revival card. Yeah, and then, uh, Gremlin, and then Yugi, and then Kaiba summons Gremlin and powers it up real big, so it can draw? They're, they have yeah. a draw. It's yeah. the first time. It's the first time Dark Yugi doesn't flat out win the game, and and the only time in this series. The only time in this series, and uh, the the first time, and like the only time throughout the entire series until like near the end of Duelist Kingdom. Hmm. Uh, Dark Yugi yeah. doesn't. Dark Yugi doesn't lose a whole lot. It's it's kind of hard to lose when you're cheating literally, pe- literally subconsciously all the time. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, Kaiba gets away and uh, plots his revenge, which we will follow the- up on later. Yep. What the fuck is episode four? I forgot. I should have it- taken notes. It's the guy with the watches. Yeah, Good idea. Oh yeah, me. the watch guy. The guy with the watches. Yeah. That guy's fucking weird. He's every Jotaro, show. apparently. He uh, no, no, beats the Shotaro. shit He beats the shit out of anybody that brushes up against his arms. Cause like they might they might scuff up his watch or scratch it or something. Dude, just don't wear them. Just don't wear them in public. But then how will know how will anybody know that he's got ten watches? Well he roll he, he covers them up with his sleeves anyway. Yeah! Or you could like wear them as a necklace, where they're less likely to get to get 
people accidentally brushing up against you. Maybe he just, just likes wrap punching in saran wrap. Or just wear short sleeve shirts, because if people can see that a guy is wearing, like, 40 watches, they're gonna avoid him. Or because he's clearly him. weird. Yeah, you could also acknowledge the fact that he's insane. Yeah, he's a he weird guy! We are acknowledging that he's insane! He's wearing 40 watches! He's wearing, like, a thousand watches! Unless you're, like, an international banker with a bunch of watches set to different time zones, you don't need that. You don't need more than one watch, period. This dude, a billion watches all set to the same time zone. Do you think he obsessed? Do you think he obs- Do you think he obsessively makes sure they're all set to the same time exactly? How do you think he accomplishes hmm. that? Because a dude, a dude, a dude running this level of obsession's got to be. I just realized that the plot of this episode is driven by Miho. It, how does that work in the manga where she doesn't exist? I'm pretty sure it's just someone else wanted the watch. Okay, that makes sense. Because I know yeah. this asshole is real. Yeah, this asshole is definitely real because he is. He is an asshole. <laughs> What an asshole! Yep, what you'll be saying that about asshole. a lot of other characters. Anyway, so so uh, Miho wants the watch, so she has the guy with the name with that's cars. But I already uh, fucked it up, so I like might. A... Yeah, him. Car. She wants a watch, so so uh, simp simp man, Mister Simpy. Uh, yeah, that, that stands... is truly his name. He is the simp. Supreme in the show. <laughs> okay, so th- so uh, Simpson just just stands in line, <laughs> and uh, and uh, then they go to the arcade where the guy takes it. He's yep. like, "You don't deserve this watch because I'm better than you because I have many watches and that makes me better than you." C- can and we just acknowledge can- the fact that uh, multiple times these people go to the arcade and someone beats the crap out of them and nobody else in the arcade notices. Pretty, it's pretty. Epic. People, and then they keep going back. Yeah, people are very people are very private in Japan. They don't look they don't look at people in the eye. It's like everyone in Japan has social anxiety. I guess. Like I, I'm pretty sure that's kind of accurate. You could hmm. theoretically beat the crap out of someone in the same build in the same location every day, and no one would notice. I mean, yeah, sometimes it, you just have to remember that people uh, won't help other people because they, they're too scared and they think someone else will help them. Or they don't care, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Or or it's an, anim- or it's an anime, and if, if the background characters stepped in to help every time, then Dark Yuki wouldn't be able to show up. And... Also true. Hmm. What, what, and, like, are, are we already at Dark Yuki? Uh, basically, yeah. Episode. Yeah, the, the guys are like, hey, the guy, Dark Yuki shows up and is all like, You, Mr. Watchman, I have an idea. Let's play a game where we bu- we put, we, we stop the timer and the one who's close to zero doesn't get their hands chopped off. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, what is closest to ten? Yeah. Close yeah. to ten, zero, fuck but you, if you go over ten, your hand gets chopped off. So there you go. Yep. The ultimate se- the ultimate punishment for a guy who likes watches is having his hands chopped off. And no, yeah. the ultimate no, though, then he tries to cheat, and then punishment game, and he thinks he's a watch, and it's horrifying. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it it's it's amazing. It's awesome. Although I think. I would have think that would be like his ultimate his ultimate wet dream being made of watches, but okay. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, so yeah, find... Yuki gets the watch back. Uh, Miho's happy. Neat. Yay! Yeah, because uh, even though even though Honda was the one standing in the line, Yuki's the one who bought the watch, and when he bought the watch, the guy. The villain was all like, "Hey, I you don't deserve this watch because you're a child, and this is a watch for a child. But I am better than 
Fuck it. It's stupid. It's stupid. I'm better than your average child. Tamagotchis! Yes. <laughs> Literally uh, wait, just no. Tamagotchis. Hang on. No, 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 not Tamagotchis yet. We've got two more episodes before that. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. Oh, we, yeah, we got the, we the, the, the yeah, we got Shadi, the the Egyptian. Oh guy. yeah, the most interesting character in the episode, in the show, in the franchise, who Kazuki Takahashi just forgets he, about. He, he just shows up to say, "Yup, Yugi, your your guy sure is Egyptian." Bye. Yeah, <laughs> Takahashi it. introduced this mysterious character who everyone was fascinated by, and then just did nothing with him until literally the end of the franchise. Like, uh, like I, I gotta uh, say. Uh, I gotta say that the best part of this episode was when he finally finds Yami Yugi's real soul room, and he's just sitting there and he's like, "Yo, bitch." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yo. I just have this that ep- in my notes. Episode five. Yo. <laughs> yeah. Yep. This uh, this episode is practically shot for shot remade in uh, in Dual Monsters, and I love it. Yes. They um. Do. They do remake this. Is is this the is this the only time is this the only thing Shadi does in the manga? Is the next is the next episode with him canon? Uh does, does, does he act does he does he actually uh does he actually he like mind Jack's tan, Tristan? Yeah, he yeah, plays I'm he, sure he, 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 I'm certain he does, yeah. Let me look oh, yeah. Hello Yuki. I'm going to play pirate. I'm going to make your. I'm going to make your your uh, girlfriend walk the gangplank, and I'm going to play a game, and I'm going to stick my fucking onk on her back in a rope, and you know what? The game makes so little sense that I'm going to just say that it's probably anime original, because uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. You get, uh, Shadi does shot. So basically, Shadi yeah, doesn't want yeah, to episode, hurt Yugi's girlfriend. This episode Sh- is. Yep. Shadi yeah, doesn't yeah, want to yeah, hurt his yeah, girlfriend. Yeah. It's just. It's it just. Uh, manga. What? This is it in isn't, the manga. Yes. It is in the manga. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shadi doesn't want to hurt Yugi's girlfriend, and he probably won't actually kill her, but he wants Yugi to think he will. Because the only way to bring Dark Yugi out is to threaten to kill one of Yugi's friends. Pretty much. And that's basically the reason why Kaiba is such a dick, because he also just wants to bring out Yam- Yami Yugi every time he sees y- he, me- he shows up. He's like, yeah. hey, hey, Yugi, I don't actually give a fuck about your fucking, fucking lame-ass friends, but I really want to meet, I really want to dual year split personality evil doppelganger whatever so uh, here's a gun bam Honda's dead <laughs> now what yeah. bitch yeah. anyway next ep- next episode next episode I yeah, guess that, that now now it's now it's Tamagotchi now it's Tamagotchi yeah and suddenly Weevil Underwood shows up <laughs> Oh god, he does look like it, but no. Yeah, yeah uh, apparently, yeah, apparently, hilarious. Yeah, yeah, apparently, this character model was reused for Weevil, but it's not the same character. It just is identical in every way except color colorization. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it basically, also confirms that the Millennium Puzzle is basically intrinsically linked to Yugi, and only he can use it. Yeah. 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 Well, again, you have to have the spiky hair. Yeah. The only people, the only, the, like the only other person in the fran, the only other people in the franchise who have ever successfully used the Millennium Puzzle are literally just Yugi, but d- in a different time period huh. and situation hmm. entirely. Like, there's an incarnation of Yugi and that lived from that lived in ancient Atlantis. There's an incarnation of Yugi that was King. That was King Henry. Anyway, uh, so I think those are the only. I thought I think those are the only two. So there's this uh, there's this guy called Kujirada, and he's this he's this big ball of a man. Uh, he's very large. He's a he's very, very large, large. He's a very large boy. Yeah, he uh, does not look like a child at all. Even compared to the other people who definitely do not look like children, he does not look like a child at all. Yeah. <laughs> This man uh, looks like a man. This boy looks like a man. A big, 
ugly fat man. Mm -hmm. And he plays Tamagotchis and he thinks he's better than everyone else because he plays Tamagotchi real good. His Tamagotchi eats other Tamagotchis. And therefore he is the best. And that is kind of the general theme. Everyone thinks they're better than everyone else because they play games real good. But, but this, this one guy, has a twist. This guy in particular stands out because he is, it's like he's almost pretending to be obnoxious. Like he's yeah. playing it up real big because, uh, because someone is pulling the strings. Hmm. Ah. And, uh, yeah, as it turns out, this guy is just a freaking human pet to this other guy. Yeah. Uh, who's, yeah, he, like he's got a whip and everything. The, unlike the, no unlike the hand. Unlike the hamburger twist, which, unlike the hamburger episode, where the twist was superfluous, but, like, really well plotted out, this one just kind of comes the fuck out of nowhere. Like, I wasn't expecting this at all. Well, I, actually, I was, because I saw this guy who was, whose model was reused for a villain, and I was expecting him to be a villain, but he seemed like a not-villain, and then he definitely was a villain, and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Why else would that guy's mo char why else would use a character model for a villain? Like yeah. like like character models are reused all the time in animation, especially low budget animation. Like this show is very clearly low budget. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But but like um yeah, uh so typically if a character is a villain, you don't you, you only use their character models for other villains because Audiences are going to see this character model and think, oh, that's clearly a villain. So if you make it the central protagonist, it's, people are going to get confused. You can't, ha you can't confuse the children. So yeah, once yeah. a character's a villain, their model has to be a villain all the time. Or a background character. There's, yeah. there's nothing. So I saw this guy, he's the main character, clearly has to be a villain. But I'm only, I only know he's a villain because there's, there's, there's more show after this. So. I mean, wow. it's really, it's really cool. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so then. Anyway, yeah. so he has a fucking whip. <laughs> yeah. So then Yamayuki comes out and says, "No slavery, bad." Uh, and how the <laughs> fuck does a child? How the fuck does a child get so damn good with a whip? Uh, he has a lot of practice, obviously. How? The other thing about this episode too is just, I have in my notes here. You mean to tell me that not everything in this show revolves around Kaiba? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, actually, um, Kaiba, again, Kaiba only shows up for card games. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't care about anything else. Like, in, also, in the Kaiba just has another blue eyes now. Uh, yeah, so, um, I think it's in the manga. Where came from, but he has it. Oh, uh, apparently what he does is, after he finds a, the first blue eyes he's ever found, and doesn't get what he wants, he... Sends his bodyguards or whatever out all over the world looking for blue eyes to just basically harass people, beat them up, murder them, whatever it takes to get the blue eyes to Kaiba. Huh. I don't yeah. think they acknowledge that in the anime. I don't know if it's canon in the manga. I just heard it somewhere and I think, yeah, that makes oh, sense. Oh yeah, that, that is what happens. He literally yep. kills people for the other three blue eyes. Oh, Kaiba yeah. has wow. poured millions of dollars and thousands of his employees' man hours into expanding his trading card collection. Yes. I mean, I mean, technically, he okay. So he is a villain right now, but uh, once once the whole world starts revolving around card games, Kaiba goes from a villain to the guy who's single handedly brought about world peace, but also is still a dick. So he's still a villain. But he, yeah. again, uh, but my I can't stress that, I, is that he's basically Shadow the Hedgehog. I can't stress this enough. Okay, so Kaiba Corp, before, Kai, before Seto took over, manufactured all of the world's weapons. Literally all of the world's weapons. Kaiba's dad was basically DJ from the Star Wars movie no one likes. He basically, he sold the bad guys the weapons, he sold the good guys the weapons. Literally all the guys, all the weapons, all the time. Then Seto took over and rapidly shifted the, 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 the company that makes all the guns to card games and amusement parks. Yes. <laughs> yep. Basically, and, and basically the reason why the entire universe revolves around card games after, 
after Kaiba makes his hologram technology is because how else are they going to fight wars? They don't have guns. The company that made the guns just suddenly is about card games now. I guess we're doing this now. I guess nobody else decides to make guns then. <laughs> he single-handedly brought... Well, no, it was a monopoly. And it's really... It's kind of hard to fill a, a hole left by a monopoly. That's kind of why monopolies are bad. Because if a company well, if, with a if monopoly... We, if a if company with a monopoly on, just suddenly decides to do something else, you, you kind of just have to follow them. I guess. If if we could solve all armed conflict with, you know, hologram dragons instead, why would anyone want to fill that monopoly? That'd be awesome. That's yeah, that point. is awesome. It, yeah, it, it's a lot safer, yeah. and people people only die when magic is involved. It, Card it's games great. are significantly more profitable. So yeah, Kaiba single-handedly brought about world peace, but he's such a dick that we all just assume, we all just think of him as a villain. Well, he, he, he brought about world peace, but only so he could kick one guy's ass. I know! <laughs> That's, it's hilarious! It's, it's like, he is the Elon Musk of anime. He is, the, he is so petty, he single-handedly brought about world peace! <laughs> nice. Yeah, he's quite the guy. Well, no, in the manga, he's so petty, he single-handedly brought about world peace. I don't think he invented holograms... He didn't. Inv he invented holograms before he met Yugi in the anime, or at least in the Duel Monsters anime. It, it seems God. to be that way in this as well. God, the timeline is confusing. Well, no, he it, he invented. Like in no holograms didn't exist. The holograms didn't exist until like the Death T arc in this anime. Yeah. Uh, so I he guess. basically. I, I, I have many things to say about that, but we'll get there. Basically, yeah. after basically after Yugi and Kaiba had their shadow game, Kaiba has that has the idea for holograms. He's like, huh, oh, okay. this card game what, is way cooler what if, if you can if that thing that Yami Yugi does, but for real. What if I can? Mon <laughs> what if I can profit off of this ancient Egyptian magic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that's I, all. That's all. That's all. Capitalism is. It's like, oh wow, there's a there's a thing. How can I make money off of it? But see, Kaiba doesn't really do it for money. He does it because he he's just he's, he's just in love with Yugi, and he wants to kick I his want ass to so make. Bad. I want to bring peace to the world angrily. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so great. It's so and, great. Anyway, anyway, but moving on I to went, episode eight. Uh, episode eight. eight. So what immediately after you know um, all, all that other stuff happening, uh, Kaiba decides to kidnap Yugi and force him to battle the first of his Shitenno or game masters. Uh, yeah, this this episode makes no sense. It's the guy with the <laughs> dolls, and I forgot everything that happened in it. <laughs> oh my god! That's, you all, that's all. I remember this episode. It's so funny. Okay, so. We're playing, so Kaiba sends his first of the League of Four douchebags to go beat Yuki <laughs> in a game, and he chooses dual monsters, so he gets the creepy doll guy to go duel him, and then this they duel, is and so he uses his doll field, which is his house. And but also, we, Yugi doesn't. Yugi doesn't know wouldn't about be, it. Wouldn't that yes, be okay, fucking so amazing, so though? Uh, I, I gotta, I gotta say, I just gotta. Wouldn't it be fucking hilarious if the rules of fucking dual monsters <laughs> allowed you to have your own house as a field spell? Not it's only, like, I oh mean, yeah, you're it, playing it, in my room. You play by my rules now. Like, like, after okay, after, after that, dual mon, that, my favorite part is that not only are they in the doll field, Yugi doesn't know about its effect, <laughs> but he is able to see the results of it, which means He's all like, that, he huh. is, that he does know the effect, because he would have had to agree. Like, okay. it doesn't make any sense. It so, doesn't make any sense at all. Okay. There is no so, way you could play a game where you would have an effect that worked and not know about it. <laughs> so, the, the way it works is because every game that Dark Yugi plays is a shadow game, Oh, are the you effects, saying... the, yeah, the effects of the shadow games are are based on the are based on the imaginations of the players. So basically, Kaiba 
I, I guess Kaiba acknowledges that magic exists in this anime. He doesn't in the Duel Monsters anime, and that's kind of like his whole deal. That he doesn't know why Yugi turns into a different guy, but he just knows magic is bullshit and blah 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 science. But uh, here he's like, okay, so I want to test the limits of this. So I want to have a gu- fight Yugi's other face. <laughs> so I want, yeah. I want, I'm going to pick the weirdest guy I know with a house full of fucking mannequins and dolls. And I'm going to see if that counts as a field spell. And a, and uh, I guess te- t- test concluded. Yep, yep, that counts as a field spell in Yugi's ima- in the Shadow Game rules. I guess. Th- apparently, this is news to Yugi because he didn't know that either. It's like, yeah, oh, basically the whole theming of this season. It's like everything that doesn't make sense. It's just Shadow Game magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, Yugi. Do- so basically, Dark Yugi doesn't even know the rules of his own Shadow Game stuff. He's all like, "Oh, I guess I got to be careful about where I challenge people to Shadow Games well, now. You, you if I challenge people, explained, if I ch- just explained it yourself, the whole yeah. idea of the Shadow Games is that it's based on the imaginations of the players. That yeah. doesn't just mean Yugi makes the rules. Yeah. So basically, uh, whenever Dark Yugi plays. Dual monsters specifically, he has to make sure he's not in a dude's creepy house <laughs> and they're playing cards thematic to what they own. No, that's the thing, though. He wasn't playing thematic cards at all. That's what tripped him up. He was playing yeah. normal cards, but because it was on a doll I field, think if they, if they I became think... doll cards. I think if they remade this episode in Dual Monsters, they would have probably used actual doll cards, or they would have not. I but can't expect why it was such a big deal because he didn't know like, why these monsters weren't weak to their normal weaknesses, and it's because the yeah. field spell was turning them into doll monsters. This is so weird. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, Yugi kicks his ass, and for the first time, doesn't punish him because he technically didn't cheat. He 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 sort he sort of surprised Yugi, but technically it wasn't cheating because it worked. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, guess. I, I guess the the field spell twist wasn't a cheat. It was like the the rules of the shadow game that just weren't explained to anyone, including the people who declare the shadow game. <laughs> it's fucking weird, and uh, technically yeah, Yugi doesn't. Shadow game, I don't think shadow games are like Yugi's power. It's just something that he can summon. A shadow yeah, game it's, isn't yeah. like he makes the rules. He makes he controls everything. It's like yeah. summoning a de- it's like summoning a yeah. demon. Anybody with a millennium, a demon, anybody with but a... it's not necessarily going to do your bidding. So, in addition to the uh... specific powers of the millennium items, they can they can hold souls. They can possess people. They can declare shadow games. If you have a millennium item, you can declare a shadow game. Yeah. And uh, you, just because you have that ability doesn't mean you understand how they work. Yep. Yeah. Yugi, do, Yugi doesn't actually punish any of Kaiba's uh, sh- sh- game, game masters. I'm just going to call them game masters because I don't know how... Shitin, yeah, shitin, 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 shitty, 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 no nos. I think the way Yugi's powers work is that it's just like the game results in the punishment if you don't play by the rules. Yugi doesn't yep. do anything. Yugi doesn't uh, have. A, you, I don't think Yugi has any real powers of his own other than you know manipulating fate. It's just when he declares a shadow game. That's just a thing that's happening now. Nobody's in control. Yep. Yet. yep. The only time he ever actually directly influences anyone is when he mind crushes Kaiba. Spoilers. <laughs> Next episode! Yeah. Which, uh, which episode are we on now? We're on to the yo-yo one. <laughs> <laughs> the yo-yo <laughs> Fucking yo-yos! Yo-yo Karaka. <laughs> Yo-yos are games, apparently. This is this is exactly also, where I just lost lost it, and my brain liquefied inside my head. This, How is a is yo-yo a game? I putting the episodes on fast forward. How is a yo-yo a game? It's hilarious. That's a. I mean, it is, but why though? How? What? Because they're also weapons, so you can beat people up with them, and that's the definition of a game in this I universe. Mean, I, I mean. Guess. 
I mean, Ness from Earthbound would tend to agree with that. Sure. I mean, violence is a game to some people. Like and and to to his credit, to their they're having fun. To his credit, <laughs> to his credit, Yugi did invent spleef for Minecraft. Yugi did figure out how to make yo-yos into a game by playing Spleef from Minecraft, a game that wouldn't be invented for two decades. <laughs> oh god, that really is what he did, isn't it? Yeah, it's literally, they played Spleef. Does what they did was... not play Spleef anymore? I'm pretty sure someone does. So, for the people who don't play Minecraft, because apparently there are people that don't play Minecraft, a game hey, that, is, that rules the world, Curtis. Yeah, I don't sure. play it. So, well, you play it with your, your face is on our fucking mountain. <laughs> you you play it with your sister sometimes, yes. Yeah, yeah, because you're a good because bo- you're a good brother. You're a good boy. Well, anyway, spleef, spleef. Uh, you basically you you dig holes and try to try to get people to fall. Yeah, the the thing about spleef though is like it was basically people trying to make their own games in the game back when the game was a lot more simple. Now that well, there are things like sprinting and various other well, forms of combat, I'm not sure if Spleef is even play Like, yeah, it's I'm positive it's playable, but there are just so many other things you can do in Minecraft now yeah, that I'm like, not sure like, it's uh, even relevant anymore. Yeah, like uh like creeper roulette and Oh god. And uh that was my well, attempt at making a secondary game when it came let's with see. like Yeah, but that that was Oh, that, oh, and there's also that. There's also, I accidentally discovered Five Nights at Freddy's in Minecraft. I was working on Five Nights at Freddy's in Minecraft, but I accidentally discovered it a couple weeks ago. Huh. I'm okay. not going to explain it right now, because Five Nights at Freddy's wasn't covered in this series. Because okay. it didn't exist yet. It didn't exist if you, yet. If you play a shadow game in Minecraft, it's it's Five Nights at Freddy's in Minecraft. Oh, I am, oh, I am working <laughs> on something. I am working on something. I'll show you later. Okay. I'll show anyway. all of you. Uh, but, anyway, oh. uh, what spleef? Yeah, spleef. Yeah, um, yo yos. <laughs> yo-yos. I want an entire. I want an entire anime about Minecraft, and they play spleef. Do it. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, there's oh, yeah, a the, dude the whole with... the whole impetus for this, you know, for this confrontation in the first place is because Joey uh, is uh, seemingly friends with these guys and uh, yeah, beats people for up whatever... for fun. For whatever reason, the Yo-Yo episode is also the jo- is also the uh, a Joey backstory character development episode. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure it might have been that in the manga. I don't fucking it was this Any- episode is from anyway. The manga. Just so looking it up, by the way, apparently there's so only real. like one competitive spleef server left in the world. So yeah, uh, it's should... not really as relevant as it used to be, unfortunately. We, we should, we should Though make. Though apparently, a... it is canon to Minecraft Story Mode. We should make it. We should make a Spleef Arena in Prime sometime. Yeah, like, Minecraft Story Mode. Oh my god, I forgot that exists. Yeah, yeah. the Telltale games. Uh, um, uh, on Captain Sparkle. Captain Sparkles is in Minecraft Story Mode with his usher skin, so I guess that's canon. Anyway, enough Minecraft. It's not canon. To Yu-Gi-Oh. No. Yeah. You know what Yu-Gi-Oh. is canon? You know what is canon? Yo-yos with spikes on them that you can use as flails. Yes. yes. <laughs> what is that retractable spikes? Retractable spikes. In case you want to play in case in case you want to play with your yo-yo like normal. But also you want to kill someone. Sometime. Yeah. <laughs> it's it it works like it works like those like those uh like those shoes that that are roller blades, roller skates, or also knives. Sure, okay, <laughs> like those lasers. Anyway, um... they had laser. They had laser shoes in Doctor Who. They did a James Bond parody episode, and there were laser shoes. So, Doctor Who's yeah, not Doctor the... Who's not canon either. Anyway, so, the, the, so the, the, Joey, Joey runs Joey into was... some. Joey yeah. runs into some old friends, and Joey was a big old fucking bully at some, when we first met him, so that's not good news. I feel yeah. like I remember they expand on that a lot in Duel Monsters. Yeah, Yugi, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I uh, them referencing it. Yeah, Joe, yeah, they're they're very proud of uh, of this Wasn't character there an they've entire made. Arc where fucking Joey went back to being a douche. Kinda. Yeah. Yes, actually. No. Yes. 
Yeah, there there were a couple. Yeah. Uh, every so every so often, uh, the the way you uh, the way you do character development is you have a character revert a couple. You revert to how they were when you first met them, and then you have to confront them again, over and over again, yeah. while we come up with new ideas because mangas because manga has to be released weekly, monthly, whatever. Yeah, it's like so. it's like new it's like newspaper comics. They just got to come up with shit until they come up with new shit. So Joey's with these guys because uh you know that they said they beat up his friends and he's like no don't do that I'll 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 be friends with you instead and uh bada bing. just don't hurt him. Bada bing bada boom. Book of the rage. Yes, yeah. that, that was in fact the joke. Yes. Yes. And uh eventually uh eventually Joey's friends quote beat up his real friends anyway and Joey's all like well you broke the deal I'm going to kick your ass now. He yeah. deals out his own punishment game. Yeah, and he, I really he, like this episode. I really like this episode because the game that they play, the game that Yugi plays, is so like it. It's barely a game. Yugi's just basically actually fighting these people, and it's really neat. Yeah, <laughs> very funny. I mean, yeah, it's but it's not my favorite episode because my favorite episode is going to come up. Not one. The babies. Hmm. Okay. Um, go, 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 so, go, babies. Yeah. yeah, they 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 beat up the bullies. Uh, Joey's back with the team. Happy go lucky. Cool. Happy happy friends. Yeah. Uh, happy next go episode. friends. Next episode. Next uh, episode. Oh yeah, it's, it's the one with the turbo thought teacher. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> he was a oh yeah. yeah. Hot, hot character for at least one more episode. Oh yeah, hot ass, hot ass bitch face. The first person Yugi issues a shadow, issues a punishment game to, who actually we see her a couple times again, uh, because she's not in a Kobito state. Um, yeah, her and, her punishment. We see her again. The effect is still definitely there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> it's just a permanent thing now. Um, yeah. that that keeps her attitude in check. Basically, say, though, it's also kind of it's. It's pretty well the shittiest punishment Yugi's ever do- doled out. She just well, she just can't keep makeup on her face. That's it. Yeah. So so the <laughs> so this lady's a bitch, but also she's hot, uh, and she uses her hotness to bribe her boss into implementing restrictive rules. So in episode two of the of the anime, uh, Anzu Teo, what's her face, whatever her name is, and I don't. Why? Why is her name so different? Anyway, okay, everyone—the only one who even resembles their localized name is Joey. Yeah, well, that's that's because they wanted the so the the name the name Junochi was was picked because Yujo means friendship in Japanese. Huh. So uh, they and they and uh, four kids four kids had enough had enough intelligence to understand the pun. So they wanted they wanted to preserve that, and they didn't give a shit about anyone else's name. That that makes the Yujo friendship card really redundant. Yes, uh, that is the point. It's <laughs> it, it, that is also it's a, a pun. It, it's yeah, a pun. It's a pun. Neat. It's a pun. No, but it's, it's literally it's literally a card called friendship. Friendship. Yes, yes. that's the pun. <laughs> it, the Jap- <laughs> that's the not Jap- a pun. It yeah, is it in is. Japan. Yeah, it is. Because what? because it's you and Joe, Yugi and Joe Joe Nochi, and friendship. So it's puns. Yeah. Puns are a lot more similar in Japan. I mean, a lot more simpler. Yeah, it, it's literally there's just also, saying the same thing, but it means something different. <laughs> there's also a card called. There's also a card called Kame Kame, uh, and its localized name is a direct translation: the turtle that would be God. <laughs> Because Kame can mean god or turtle. Uh, yeah. Well, well, ka- Kami means god. I don't know about Kame. Kame, Kami. So the, the mm. cards, and also there, there's two cards, actually. There's Kami, Kame, and Kame, Kami. And they're, they're the both opposite. Yeah, the turtle, the turtle, turtle that would be god, god and the god that would be turtle. Yep. Yeah. Uh, anyway. That's great. What, was I talk- what were we talking about? Uh, uh, the, the, the bitchy teacher. 
The yeah. bitch teacher, yeah. So she's hot. so in episode two when when Taya has a job and she's angry about it because she, because the students aren't allowed to have jobs apparently somehow oh, even e- even though a lot of these people live on their own and the ones who common. don't it's a common rule it's a common rule in Japan but apparently at this school it's specifically enforced because this bitch ass teacher. Wants to be a controlling bitch and bitch off at the bitch students, bitchily. So, yeah. so she hits, so she hits on her boss to get her, her rules enforced. And, uh, he, he just goes with it because she's hot. And, uh, then eventually she's, she, uh, she makes a deal with Taya that if she can get a petition filled out, with signatures, she'll reverse some of the rules with her hotness, and uh, then she bri- and then she bribes all the students to not do- to not sign the shit, and yeah. threatens to have Taya expelled, but mm-hmm. also b- behind her back. And like Yugi's all like, "Well, you know what? This is this is this is fucked up. This is you manipulative bitch. Uh, hey, let's let's play a game." Let's play what a game fuck? with with sharp glass. Oh yeah, sharp glass. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna smash a couple mirrors and we're gonna piece them together like a puzzle. But blindfolded. Yes. But blindfolded, blindfolded and, and, and oh, and safety first. We're gonna wear gloves. <laughs> yeah, and then Actually, I, and, I don't uh, think Yugi wears gloves. I think only the teacher no, does. No, 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 no Yugi. Them. Yugi does put on gloves. Oh, okay, okay, good. Yeah, it's and hilarious. They, they do it. And the teacher cheats, as you'd expect. And yeah, then, because if they're both Yugi wearing, if, if they're both supposed to wear blindfolds, how's Yugi going to know she's not wearing a blindfold? So she takes her blindfold off, and then obviously puts the mirror together real fast, and then her face cracks along the cracks in the mirror because Yugi's all like, "You, you are a bitch." <laughs> yes. You know what I? Ju- I you know what then I just she realized. An ugly person. You know what I... Uh, no, no. Uh, that is apparently what she looks like without her makeup now. Wait, is that what she always looks like under her makeup? Or the- I know. Uh, it's very unclear, but at any rate, her permanent effect, her permanent punishment is that every time she's a bitch, her makeup cracks. Like, real bad. Hmm. So, basically, it keeps her attitude in check. She's She's still very mean, but, like, mean like a teacher should be in real life. Teachers do kind of need to be kind of strict, but like this this lady was taking it overboard, and now Yugi's all like, "Yeah, no, fuck you." And I, you know what? I just realized this is the episode with the puzzle. This is the ep- this is the episode where where the where the girl wants to wants to give Joey a love puzzle and whatever. And oh, it was yeah, about Tristan and me. It was about Tristan and Miho in the manga. Oh, and it made a girl ever seen again. Yeah, that girl's never seen again because she's Miho in this situation, except reverse. It's weird. It's really weird. Yeah, I wondered oh. about that. Okay. It really would. It it would still make a lot more sense. Like Miho and Honda can be main characters still, but like, what if what if Tristan wants to wants to wants to? It, 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 I don't know why they chose to do it this way. Because like it could it could still work with one main character wanting to confess love to another main character and just not being able to. Uh, I also it's also worth noting I forget exactly where this started happening. I think it was around this point, the halfway point in the series, where they acknowledge that apparently Yugi doesn't remember anything that happens when he's in his Yami form. Yeah, 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 it's it's really weird because uh, Yami Yugi can remember everything that regular Yugi does. Because mm. uh, as far as he as far as he's concerned, he's they're the same guy, except not really. Because at some at some point, I, he is aware that he becomes like, a different guy. I, I assume it's just like the soul of a Tem has more experience and concentration. So it can stay active in the dormant state, whereas Yugi 
absolutely can't because he's never done this shit okay. before. Well, well but, but okay. by the time of the death to Yark, uh, you know, Yui straight up says like, oh, uh, you know, I'm going into this confidently knowing that I'm I'm using this yeah. millennium he, puzzle power. I will remember this, you know? He he figured he figured it out eventually that he becomes a different guy when he plays games. Yeah, and, and, and once he's um, not afraid of that anymore, then he's I, I think it. I think that's the reason why they introduced Bakura before the memory before the before the Monster World arc, because in the manga he doesn't show up until that moment. Yeah, that that's mm. what um, I get there. I'm not gonna jump too far ahead they, with this, but yeah. I just wanna say they really <laughs> fucked up with the Monster World shit. Because it's just kinda tacked on to the end. <laughs> well that's just yeah, kinda, kinda how it was. That's kind of how it was, yeah. And I mean, that's kind of how. Yes, but they. I don't know. It's kind of how like it, it was. Ended after death tea. It's kind of how it was. It's kind of how it is, and it's kind of how it will be. It 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 always will be this way all the time. But uh, yeah, so they introduce Bakura early because they want to set up. They don't want to explain why Yugi suddenly realizes, oh shit, I'm becoming a different guy, and, and that's why I'm blacking out. Oh god, I have. I have split personality disorder. Yay. I should see a ther. I should see a therapist. Anyway, or what episode were we talking about? Uh, so I, I guess we finished the teacher episode, and now it's uh, Capsule Monsters. Yay! Yeah, oh, the boy. first Capsule Monsters game, and I was <laughs> yeah. so like, holy shit! My like, my brain just like. My brain just, like, exploded, like, holy no, I, shit. I have that in my notes. Capsule monsters, bet we'll never see that again. Like, my brain, because, like, I, I knew in the, I knew about the manga shit that, that, that Yugi only plays games with the same character every time. And so when he didn't play, when, when Mokuba wasn't even in this episode, I was like, holy crap! <laughs> this is a really, cle this is a really good adaptation. Like, they add stuff. And they change stuff, and they they expand the world. Multiple Wait, so people play like, this game. How did the manga handle it? Like, is it basically the same thing, right down to like Mokuba has a secret base in a fucking warehouse? Yes, with his friends. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's like holy shit. Like the, the like like on the one well, hand, like, Mokuba has friends. Like, yes, he has friends. Mokuba's not evil. He certainly yeah. seems evil in this. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. he wants his he's he a wants his goblin. like right up until the uh, right up until he's beaten by Yami Yugi and he sees okay. what what Liam. he's done and what Kaiba's done. He's like he seems more evil. He seems more evil than Seto. Yeah, it's because he just wants his brother to like him, yeah. and he thinks that if he acts like his brother, then his brother will like him, hmm. and uh, that's why he goes a little overboard in some cases. Because he doesn't actually know, he doesn't actually know the rules, the limitations of being an evil do, being an evil douche. <laughs> he's just, he's just, he's just play acting, and that, yeah, huh. that's also, that's also just like, I'm just, I'm just blown away by the fact that that that, that they made it in the anime so that multiple people play games. It's like it is so it is so weird that only one other person in the world plays monster plays capsule monsters in the manga and here like no there's a guy he plays capsule monsters and he's not Mokuba. Ah! Well, if you really want to get into it, technically there are a lot of people that play capsule monsters all those kids that this guy butt in front of uh, the gotcha machine. Yeah. 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 Background characters don't count. <laughs> <laughs> They're not real. But uh, yeah, so, so this real. guy, this this college student who's fawning over Miho, uh, slightly yeah, it's awkward. A, it's it is very creepy. Yes. Yeah. This and then is, it becomes very is, awkward when, another, once you reveal he wants to keep her in a pod in again because we need to justify her existence. Yeah, he episode. wants to. He wants to. He wants to kidnap her and and. Imprison her in a giant, uh, a, a giant, a giant replication of the capsule monster Gashapon. Yes, I think my favorite part of this episode is how um is how oh it's not actually it's something I wanted to bring up, which is I hate Miho. 
legitimately. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I don't. I think most I don't, people probably do. She's I, I don't really like me. I don't. Well, so, I don't. So, like a third person. Yeah, she I don't talks so much as person, and all she cares about is money and manipulating other course, people okay, to do okay. shit. It's just like she I get started, it. as far as I could tell, unless I was just like not paying attention. She only started talking in the third person like halfway through the show. Yeah, and yeah. according to Curtis, that's just an animeism. I've never yeah. seen that before, personally. No, that that's a thing. Like, the, there's a bunch of characters in in shows that do that. Yes, yeah. it is, and it's supposed to be cute, but I just find it grating. So. You know. <laughs> I don't so much as hate her so much as I, I mean, I I tend to lo- I tend to like people by default. Um, and I don't, like, uh, I, I, I don't hate the character. I hate that she doesn't have character. She's well, see by that logic, you, and they well, keep making episodes like this with seemingly well, with the express purpose of justifying her existence. Well, see, by that logic, you hate Haunt, you hate Tristan in Duel Monsters because he is also useless. I mean, yes. I'm not gonna say that I don't. Oh, oh my Tristan. god! I just don't I remember love Tr- enough about Duel Monsters to make that judgment. I right love now. Tristan. So here's my idea for why Tristan is such a pointless character. I think he was supposed to die when he dies in this. He dies, sort of, but not really. Yeah, he's he, weird. He basically pulled an Avdol with him. Yeah, we'll talk about this when we get there, but, like, I think he was supposed to die, and that's why he doesn't have much character, but then Hmm. Kazuki Takahashi got cold feet at some point. Like, I genuinely thought, okay, he died. It is, I'm pretty, like, if that's the case, it really is just, like, Avdol, and it's probably Takahashi just got, like, oh, people, I killed this character that people actually like. But I killed him because I don't know how to write him anymore. Uh, what do I do now? I never did. I never did know how to write him. I don't know why I made this character. It was a mistake. Now, see, he could have always just pulled out a Rocky and just killed him again anyways. <laughs> or just, just kill him in every episode like Kenny. <laughs> Tristan, can be, Tristan can be Kenny. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. Anyway, mm. so uh, Miho uh, doesn't like the idea of be uh, Miho doesn't like the idea of spending the entire the eternity of her existence in Darth Vader's house, <laughs> she, or Darth Vader's bedroom. Darth Vader's house is a cool castle. Yeah, on, on um, a lava planet. It's really neat. so. Yeah, that. Uh, Darth Vader's yep. castle is built on the ruins of his destroyed legs. Yami yep. Yugi beats him in a capsule last game, and then the, there you go. Yep, yep. Uh, what, what is his? What was his punishment again? Being eaten alive by a capsule monster? Uh, no, no. I think no, he, he gets brought in capsule into a pod. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this and this, not his punishment one with windows like he was going to put Miho in. Uh, no, he wasn't going to put her in one with windows. It was a, it was literally a recreation of the of the pod that the monsters trans- come in. It was yeah. transparent though. Oh, yeah. okay. So he basically, got put into the replica pod. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, fuck that guy. He was weird. <laughs> yeah. He was a creeper. I hated him too. Yeah. It was like, uh, and the worst, the, the worst of it all, the reason he has, the reason he has a fixation on Mio is because he was buying castle monsters one day, and he just saw a girl. And he was like, ah, oh, the the chances of me seeing a girl near a gashapon machine are so low. That I clearly am destined to love this person. So basically, he awesome. would have it. So basically, this is the first person he's ever. This is the first time he's ever seen a girl while putting money in a machine. So uh, basically, he. What is his entire life just based around what happens to him while he's buying capsule monsters? Like, does he only eat food that he finds on the ground while buying capsule monsters? Does he? It, does the college he, he goes was to born behind that machine, and that's the first girl he's ever seen. Does he only go? Does he only go to college because they have capsule monsters? Did Did he follow a trail of capsule monster capsules like James Woods with candy? 
<laughs> Ooh, a capsule monster. Ooh, a capsule monster. Ooh, a capsule monster. Oh, a college. I guess I'm going to college. Ooh, a capsule now. monster. Ooh, they a capsule have monster. Ooh, this, a mokuba. This, Ooh, a capsule this tra- monster. This this trail of capsule monsters leaves into this college building. I guess I'm going to college now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I love him and I hate him. He's great and also bad. I hate him. I love him. This this show is good. I like this show. Confirmed. Cool. Josie likes the stalker pedophile. No! <laughs> Do not put that out there! No! <laughs> Oh, no. Your words, not mine. No, I did not say that. I said I love him and I hate him. He's a good character. He's a good villain and a bad guy. Yes, indeed. Uh, okay, next next bad guy. It's the lucky one. The the one who always wins at game shows. I love oh, yeah. This. Gary Oak. That's hilarious. I love this guy. Yeah, he's so, ba- yeah, he, he's, he's an XP, he's an XP of Gary Oak. He, oh, he totally he, is, yeah. He uh he, even he looks has like Gary. The only difference this, is the hair. He has the same power. Well, he has a, in comparison to Yu-Gi-Oh, the other other main characters in Yu-Gi-Oh, he has a very toned down version of the hairstyle he's God. clearly no, meant no, no, to no, have. No, no. Him him and Yugi are the exact parallel opposite designs of Ash and Gary. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. Anyway, that uh is weird. so holy shit. So this guy has the same powers as the Millennium Puzzle, but is clearly aware of it and makes no secret about it. Like, yeah, yeah look at me, I'm so no lucky. Why is this a thing? Was it ever explained where those powers came from, or nope. is he just... He's just really lucky. That's just who he is. He, he plays he plays game shows on TV, and now he's rich, and he... He, whenever he's hungry, he just walks into the first restaurant he sees, and no matter what, he, he, he's the 10,000th customer, so he eats. Actually, the, the one thing I was thinking this whole episode was that they keep talking about him like he's super rich, but the amount of money he was winning is not a lot. Like, well, 100,000 that... yen is only like 900 US dollars. Okay, but here's the, th- here's the thing, though. He literally wins the top prize in any game he plays ever. I don't yeah, think. Like, say, yeah, like a thousand bucks, maybe not a lot, but if you were winning that like every day consistently, it would be yeah. a lot. Okay, so here's the deal: um, gambling is legal in Japan, so he's probably like gambling like all the time. Also, oh, probably, most, yeah. or also conversely, most celebrities don't actually have a whole lot of liquid assets, but but they they kind of just if they want money, they ask for it and they get it. Speaking of gambling being legal, actually, that that was a, a weird moment in one of the episodes where the, they're in the arcade and they're just playing on slot machines. I'm just like, how is that legal? Uh, in Japan, they don't have rules. I guess, like it, in the UK, the... you can go to places like that, but like, no, no kids. It's eighteen plus. No, nope. in in Japan, it's just the purge all the time. No laws. Hmm. Absolutely, you can you can murder you can murder anyone you want. That's why that's why Yugi gets away with it all the time. I guess. Yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, lucky guy. He, he challenges Yugi and and seemingly wins, and then Yugi's like, "Nope, I'm cooler than you." Yep. Uh, uh, in a case where two people can cheat all the time, Yugi is always going to be the one who wins all the time. Yeah. Even he, if he can just cheat harder. He can cheat harder, and uh, he cheats so hard that he turns that guy's cheating off. Yeah. So he is no longer lucky anymore, and uh, in fact, is, he's extremely unlucky. He's extremely unlucky, which is really bad for him because uh, he was kind of living off of that luck. Yep. So he's fucked now. He's probably he's probably homeless now. Yep. Was he homeless before? I don't even know if he ha- he, <sighs> he he probably doesn't. He probably never owned a home or apartment or anything, and he just. Here's what happens. He's like he's like the purple man in, in Luke Cage. He just walks in, No, not Luke Cage, Jessica Jones. He just walks into someone's house and says, I live here now, and he's so lucky, it just happens. Hmm. He's like, hey, uh, I live here now, get out. And, then, and everyone's all like, well, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, okay, so next one is do, 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 uh, the psychic guy. The the one with his entourage of of uh, ladies. I really like. I really like this guy's design. Yeah, he's really weird. 
Yeah, the, 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 there's a lot of good goblins in this show, uh, and he's yeah, one of he's. Ah, uh, I just realized. I just realized that that uh, the guy that we had, Levi, he's not here. He loved goblins. He did. He he did love goblins. Uh, he did, R.I.P. But, Levi. Uh, uh, yeah, he <laughs> see was, him in, was, in Gathered was, Crew. Was, okay, <laughs> so in this episode, basically, Taya doesn't like. Uh, doesn't believe in fortune telling, and this douche, he really, I guess, likes Taya. Who knows? Who cares? Maybe he's just jealous. Maybe he only likes her because she doesn't believe in him. Uh, no, he, no, he wants see, all the girls. That's what it is. He wants all the girls because a lot of the girls in his harem aren't very hot, but he just wants all of them all the time. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, he eventually gets her to do a fortune, and he says that at 6 p.m., someone who's watching over you will show up. And she's like, oh, maybe it'll be Yami Yugi, who saved her in episode two, but he couldn't. she couldn't see him because he was blindfolded. Anyway. Anyway. Yep. So then so then Creeper shows up, chloroforms her, then they play the chloroform game, where he has, like, a bunch of string tied. <laughs> oh, up. yeah, so it the turns out he was second. right. Dark Yugi did show up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to say, the best part of this is that he actually is right. Because he yeah. shows up. But he his fortunes are bullshit. He basically just has a bunch of things written down to make sure that yeah. things happen. And he calls yeah, whenever, his fortunes. Yeah, whenever yeah. anything ha- whenever anything happens, he or al- he basically he wrote down every word in the war he wrote down every word in the Japanese language and keeps it in his cloak. And whenever anything happens, he just whips out a thing like, see, I wrote it down. So I must be I must be real. I just realized, at the start of the episode, they show, like, uh, a burning house, and then they say, oh, yeah, yep. he predicted that. Did he set yep. that house on fire? Yep. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah he oh. did. Oh, yeah. I love that in this episode, whenever they they keep showing, you know, that silhouette of the person who saved Taya, and she's like, I wonder who it could be, but you could very clearly see the outline of Yugi's enormous <laughs> yeah. hair. That she no was else wearing a blindfold at the have. time. She was, was wearing a blindfold at the time. But what? she's not wearing a blindfold here. She's just kind of dizzy because of chloroform, but she does clearly see him, and Yugi is the only person in this time period with this hair. So, so it's clearly yeah. him. But anyway, yeah, so, yeah, the penalty game is epic. They have, like, string tied to a clock, and he has to guess which string, which uh, chloroform bottle will fall down. Why did he have more than one? Why? Where did... Did he have just multiple chloroform bottles that he came with that, that he had? I think they were they were in the chemistry lab, so I guess. Oh, Wait, okay. okay. Saying that is actually really creepy. I hope you're joking. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> this, yes. Uh, this dude just had multiple bottles of chloroform that he was carrying yeah. around. Yeah, in so addition, then... in addition to an entire cloak's worth of fortunes. So yeah. anyway. The cool thing about this is no one actually cheats in this episode. He just fucking straight up loses. And that's well, no, he, yeah. he does cheat. He trips up Yuki. Yeah, but he yes. doesn't get punished for it. True. Yeah. He got, he, yeah, because uh, that technically, technically wasn't one of the rules. It wasn't against the rules. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, that against, wasn't against the rules. Yeah, yeah I guess. that technically wasn't against the rules because I guess Yugi, I guess that Yugi kind of messed up there. He's like, and also you can't touch people. No touchy. Yeah, so- so yeah, and then he just legitimately loses because he can't predict the future, and he gets knocked out by the chloroform, and that's it. Yeah. Yep. And uh, <laughs> Taya passes out before she gets a good look at Yugi, but she sees his hair. I guess she's so drowsy that w- in her last moments of consciousness that she just thinks, "Oh my God, I'm being rescued by King Henry." Okay, so here's the thing. So England. she doesn't notice his hair, but she does notice the wound on the back of his hand, which she can't see because it's underneath her. Yes. Yeah, that was weird. Oh, chlor- chlor- chloroform Chloroform makes you see in third person, don't you know? <laughs> oh, okay. It do be That's like why I made it talks like that. It do be like that. Uh, now, now, here's the question. Does Yugi notice he has a big wound on his hand? It's not oh, too major. It's not... It's not too major a wound, but like he, he doesn't really bring it up. So where, he gets he, beat up every other episode. He, he probably, probably notices it and just thinks, eh, right like, "Yeah, I guess I caught that at some point." Huh? I don't remember being beat up this. Uh, I don't remember being beat up this 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 time this hour. I was beat up two hours ago, but I got this wound an hour ago. Huh? Maybe I got beat up so hard I forgot. 
That, yeah. ha- that happens. Maybe that. Oh, maybe that's why he isn't too bothered by the fact he keeps losing consciousness. Maybe he just assumes, oh, I'm being bullied so hard it's, got, it's causing me brain damage. That's nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah. I could believe that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, dear. I mean, Yugi, he's not stupid, but he's also not really, um, not really very assertive. So he's probably like, well, if I tell people that I'm getting my brain ripped out of my head every 20 seconds, they're going to be concerned. So I'm just going to pretend that everything's fine. Everything's yeah. fine. <laughs> Anyway, uh, next episode, next episode, it's the one with the bombs in the theme park. My oh, favorite! Yeah. I love this episode, it's my yeah. favorite episode, I love it, it's my favorite, I love I like it! I this one too, <laughs> it's good. I love it, I love it, the, the, the end of the puzzle is kind of boring, but I mean, it's the journey, it's about the journey, not the destination. Yeah. Just, it's, it's so fun, just, like, it's like... Yugi has a bomb. Yugi, dark Yugi has a bomb negotiator. This is, this is great. I love it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know so the police go- are so desperate that they just trust this random child to to negotiate it, with the terrorists. It, it, yeah, it's because the terrorist is playing games and none of them are good at games, even though this is He's Japan. Like, is any- yeah, I think this is so funny. He's like, is anyone here good at games, Yugi? <laughs> even though, <laughs> even but though the- like I was born for this moment, and then he. Gets- he- even though this is fucking Japan and Nintendo hired a fucking banker and was run by as a, as the head of the company for a couple years and it worked out fine, it, the the police chief is the one. The police are the like how how does no one on the police force know how to play games? That it's so weird to me. It's so weird. It's it's like it's like it's like they took the like. It's like they took the only five people in Japan, and they're all the police in Domino City. It's weird. Well, well, you know what they say, if you can't become a gamer, become a policeman. It's the only other option. I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess. rise up. Yeah, so, but yeah, so... If you can't rise up, you have to oppress. So, like, uh, (laughs) Taya Taya is kind of an idiot, but at least she's not so much of an idiot that she can't... like, she's starting to get the idea that maybe Yugi is secretly awesome. So she's all like, hey, Yugi, you want to go on a date? And Yugi yeah. says, all, Yugi and is she like. She to try everything she can possibly do to make him anxious as fuck. Yeah, yeah. so, like, it's, it's so weird. Like, Taya is so clueless, and then she, and then she finds out about Dark Yugi, sort of, and is like, Oh, I clearly understand all the rules now. Wait, well, how did she? How is she understanding? How did? How? How did she go from being a total idiot to? Yes, I understand the plot of this series now. Well, I know that. Remember. I know that. I know that Yugi becomes the cool one if I if I'm in danger. So I will pretend I'm drowning. Well, if you episode remember. fourteen, Taya repeatedly psychologically abuses Yugi. <laughs> to get a boyfriend. It yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so uh, uh, Joey and Tristan and Miho are stalking them because of. Uh, uh, I want to know if the date's going well or some shit. Yeah. I mean, that's that's adorable, but also creepy. And also, how the fuck does Taya. Okay, so basically, Taya notices someone in sunglasses and a weird pompadour. Staring at her, staring at her, and just all like, "Oh, it's a creeper." I'm gonna go to the bathroom, Yugi. Stay here, and then, and then he, she finds out it's Joey, and it's like, "Joey, I didn't recognize you. Why are you stalking me?" And it's all like, "Bitch, you can figure out that dark Yugi is a thing, but you couldn't recognize Joey." <laughs> yeah. No one has hair like that! No one has hair like you! You can recognize Yugi's hair, but not Joey's. How the fuck? Maybe everyone looks like Joey. Maybe he's just like the normal, you know, default human look in what this if universe. Every... Okay, but the hair, though. What if everyone had a pompadour? But well, also, it's sort of... It's it's sort of a pompadour? What... How would you describe... How would everyone... How would you describe Joey's hair? Big. It, it's like a shark head on top of his head. Okay. 
But it's he's like not a shark. shark. It's, That's a different character. It's, it's like a shark head, but also a pompadour. But also, Liam, what, what's your contribution to this? Yeah. Play in the space, Liam! Oh my god. Okay, look. This is the episode, and then, you know, and what's... Yeah. Taya gets owned. I mean, anyway, yeah. So, so Taya, so Taya is so is so annoyed at her friends that she goes riding on a Ferris wheel by herself to just to get a moment of peace to herself. And then the Ferris wheel stops because there's a terrorist. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, and then and and like the, apparently this is fucking Jigsaw and he just wants to play games all the time with the police and the police are all like, oh fuck, does anyone here know what know anything about? About games, and then Yugi's all like, "I I can play games. I'm very good at games. I am great." Yeah. And then, yeah, all right, li- all right, little cool. boy. Here's all right, little boy. Here's the only cell phone in Japan. Talk talk to the terrorist. It was and pretty epic. Talk- it was yeah. pretty epic because uh, basically, okay, so the rules of this game are. And I think this is the first time Yugi plays a game with someone where he didn't come up with the rules. Yes. Or at mm. least, or, or or an established game. Yes, so yeah. like, he tells he him didn't... a color, and then he has to figure out which, which of thing the is going cars. to blow. Cars, which of the cars on the Ferris wheel. Correspond, corresponds to that color, color right? And yeah. it turns out they all correspond to this clock uh, that you can see. In the park that has each co- each hour is a different color, so basically uh, he's like three, and then you know he blows he he's like the color purple or whatever, and then blows up the number three, and then he blows up another thing, and those are his hints. And then the I can't be- I cannot are, I cannot he, believe how I cannot believe that this amusement park has that flower wheel, and they don't have it as like their logo all over the place. That's that's yeah. some weird. That's some misbranding opportunities. This amusement park, this amusement park is shit. I don't like it. This amusement park is dumb. Eight out of ten would not recommend. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, well, um, but once you, Yugi uh, does but figure it, it out, he, he as it uh, turns out, there are thirteen cars on the Ferris wheel, and the terrorist is in the thirteenth one because he's not worried. He's not worried that one of the bombs might explode and might explode in a, such a way as to drop a car on top of him. Yeah, or so anyway, something. Yeah, but yeah, yeah Yugi figures out. Yugi figures out that he's in the thirteenth car, so he pretends that there's a bomb in the 13th car now that the guy falls for because Yugi's wearing a watch. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then, and then, yeah, he uses the watch to imitate the ticking of it and then he's like, penalty game! And then he jumps out of the thing, he's uh, thinking there's a bomb, and he jumps out of the Ferris wheel. This is... Was this even a shadow game? Well, it was at the end. He just fucking says, penalty game! And the door of darkness opens. I think he just says that. I don't even think this was a shadow game because the guy's punishment is he's scared and jumps out of the car and falls well, through the roof of the, look, co- of the c- control cabin. Yeah, but he hallucinates a fucking bomb, so clearly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, I guess this was. A sh- I guess this was a shadow game. Wait, if he could, if if Yuki could make the hallucination of the bomb, why did he need the sound from his watch? Can you just made a hallucination of the sound too? Who, who? I don't know. Who fucking knows? They just want the the writers. The writers just wanted to be clever. I guess. <laughs> I really like this episode. Flaws and all, it's a very good episode. It real. This this is the MacGyver pilot of the series. This is the, this is what the show could be if they put this much effort into it. Yeah, but instead they but instead they put me more interested. Yeah, this is this was the best episode. This was the best episode, and unlike MacGyver, they didn't blow their load on the fir- on the pilot. Hmm. For some reason, I've seen every episode of MacGyver, and the pilot is the most interesting one. Wow, my dad's it's watched ba- every episode of MacGyver as well. Okay, so the plot of MacGyver is a guy makes things out of things, uh, and cool. It, it, <laughs> And uh, in the first episode, a bank hires him to break into their secu- to break in to their bank to test their security system, and he does. And it's the best episode, and it's a fucking pilot. And like, yeah, it, it's a good pilot 
because you definitely got your funding for a series after that. But then every other episode of the series is like you you don't you don't need to be able to make things out of things. You can just what what what, what is this? Hmm. I love Yu Gi Oh. It's a good show. It's not MacGyver. Yeah. So uh, okay. Uh, uh, ne- uh, Yu Gi Oh season zero gets a DVD release. You put that on the DVD. Yu Gi Oh. It's a good show. It's not MacGyver. Quote Josie. Yeah. <laughs> DVD box quote. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah. N- n- next episode. It's the one with the witches. Uh, they're, they're this spooky. is this episode. I, I so I vaguely remembered reading about this and finding out that there was an episode of dual uh, an episode of this show where Yugi plays dual monsters and Kaiba doesn't isn't involved. And I was fascinated by that concept. And then Kaiba showed up, and then I was like disappointed. I like how Kaiba just shows up, slaps down two blue blue eyes, white dragons destroys them and wins in like seconds and he's just like only I am allowed to defeat you but then another goes, thing but I'm confused by his line that only I'm allowed to defeat you because he's also sending out people to defeat him that aren't himself he's not so. no no he's not sending out people to defeat Yugi he's sending out people to test the limits of Yugi's powers yeah, yeah. Uh. like the the, the 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 doll guy was to test what exactly the rules of shadow games were does does being in a house full of creepy dolls count as a field spell? Apparently it does. Okay, doll guy, you served your job. You go back to being retired, I guess. I'm pretty sure that guy was retired. At the start of the episode, he was having a tea party with his dolls. It was weird. Yeah. Anyway, so this episode, another thing that disappointed me about this episode, other than Kaiba being involved was uh Violet Hecate, that card, it's like the central MacGuffin. Not a real card. I th- I think the Bondi I think in Bond the Are the Bondi the card- fucking Witch Sisters real cards then? No. Wow. No. Uh Violet H- Violet an archetype or something. Vi- Violet Hec- Hecate uh has the same attack points as Dark Magician and the same general color scheme in the dual monsters anyway, but uh it's like, I think if this episode was adapted into the Duel Monsters anime, that would have just been about, it would have just been about Yugi acquiring Dark Magician and some bitches trying to steal it. Hmm. But then, okay. what, but then, what, the gimmick with there being three of them wouldn't have worked, because there's only, but, but of course they did do an episode where a guy had multiple Dark Magicians. Anyway, so there's three of them, and they're kind of hot, but also evil and mean, and also not hot. And Yugi gets sick, because apparently these these witches are magic, but also not. And there's they somehow they managed to get a hold of raw water to poison Yugi's friends with. <laughs> raw that, water. Raw water, yeah. It, I mean, that is, that is official terminology. It's water Wait. that hasn't been pasteurized. Really? Huh. Yeah, that's I a real thing. I didn't that was a thing. You can't just straight up drink water th- from the, from the ocean. You got to pasteurize it. Mean, I, I get it. that, but I don't know. Huh. They could have just called it seawater or salt water, but apparently raw water is a thing that we call it. Okay. It's, it's yeah, basically. I, I've just never heard that term before. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I think I get. It. I think I know. It's water that you you take you drain the salt out of the seawater, but only the salt. You leave in all the other minerals, and it's not healthy. You shouldn't drink it. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's a real thing. You've learned something on this day, Curtis. Hooray. And the more you know... The less you care. Anyway, so like at the start of the episode, they're doing like a magic ritual thing, and what is that ritual for? What are they doing? It's just, just so, so you know they're, they're witches. 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 Yeah, I, was, yeah. I mean, I was just, I get, thinking, just gonna say it's just establishing to show they're witches. I mean, wouldn't it wouldn't have been easier to have them just draw a hat? You know what? This is more interesting. Never mind. I like this. Um, but also, okay. So another thing, another th- some stuff. I I lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah. The point is, they um, find out. But yeah, they that- are apparently actually magical because they recoil because they recoil at the touch of Yugi's Millennium Puzzle. Yeah. Like, yeah. like they, 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 they're not just allergic to gold. They're allergic to, 
d- d- magic that's cooler than theirs. <laughs> it do be like that sometimes. It yeah, do they, be they, like that sometimes. They figure out that Yugi's got this, uh, you know, Violet Hecate card, and they're like, "Oh, uh, we want that because we got the other two that it goes with." And uh, but it's also real nice to complete but, the set. Also, also, Yugi does not have it because he got it from Taya, who did get it. That's basically right. Taya was like, "I want to. I should buy a pack of card games because a pack a pack of card games because my friends like card games, so I should like card games." And she buys a pack, and her first pack had this very, very rare card, and she's like, I I have no interest in this game other than one, I want to learn about this game, so I, I want to start out with not broken-ass cards, and for some reason we think this is a broken-ass card. Here, Yugi, I think you should have it. And uh, Yugi's all like, oh, okay, I love you. I mean, I love this card. Thank you. I love you. He's he's very horny, you see. Yeah. <laughs> and so so uh the the witch sisters pretend to be one witch sister, one witch, one girl, one one girl. And uh they pretend they have a crush on Yugi, but they just want to be all like, "Hey, you should hey, you should give me something to remember you by. I want this card." And Yugi's all like, oh no, something very special to me gave me that card. And then, and then he says, you can have any of the other cards though. And then she's all, and then they're all like, N- never mind then. And she seems to be very annoyed mm-hmm. because she is, because that's literally the only reason she's, she was taking care of Yugi when he was sick. Did she poison him too? Uh, maybe. She Maybe. keeps giving him. She keeps giving him like n- like knitted clothing that she made herself. Apparently, D- did did she infect? Did she infect the clothes she was giving the gifts she was giving Yugi with anthrax or something? <laughs> she gave Yugi coronavirus. Oh no! Probably. Oh apparently, god! So I mean, sad. technically, the coronavirus has existed for a very long time. Just this strain is u- of coronavirus is unique. The one from this time i don't want to talk about the coronavirus anymore oh oh dear i'm sorry i miss oh, burger king <laughs> <laughs> I went to, oh, okay this actually reminds me i went to burger king recently in a car and uh they didn't have the stacker anymore and i cried well oh, yeah fucking it's be- mcdonald's doesn't have mcgriddles i'm so fucking angry yeah, it's because it's because uh, social distancing. You can't you can't have uh, two McGriddles within six feet of each other. Remember? <laughs> anyway, so uh, this lady, this these witches, these witches are bitches. So they're all like, "Hey, Yugi, I'm gonna steal your fucking triangle, even though we can't touch." How did they steal the Millennium Puzzle exactly? They can't touch it. Uh, they steal the Millennium Puzzle and threaten Yugi to and threaten to just keep it forever, unless Yugi plays them in a children's card game. Anyway, so since you this will not this so will not be this will not be the first time someone steals the Millennium Puzzle and threatens you and threatens to keep it if Yugi doesn't play them in a card game hmm, or sure. a game or a game of Japanese Scrabble. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. then Kaiba shows up. I guess he just broke into their house. I guess so. And then it's all like, and then it's all like, so um, Yuki is not actually good at ga- at games unless he has that triangle you soul. So I'm gonna play you if you now myself, and I'm me. So I'm gonna win. Yeah, no, he, he's just like, oh, my my Kaiba sense is tingling. Someone's playing Yugi in a card game. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Rare card. Yeah. And and then he beats them with his overpowered ass cards. He has three blue eyes white dragon, which he just suddenly has now. I kinda like it but be- I kinda like it better if Kaiba just randomly duels Yugi once and then he pulls out all three of them. C- after after previously not even owning one, he's all like, Hey Yugi, guess what? I have all three of these now, bitch! I I just love it like I, I miss. I forgot what episode when we were on when I mentioned that earlier. But like, he just has these now, and there's no fucking explanation for it. It's because they had. Like, there was an explanation in the oh, manga. They did blue this. eyes before. Well, now I have three. Well, there's a there's an explanation Bitch. in the manga, but they just skipped it over because I guess they wanted to just 
show that Kaiba has gotten really awesome now. He was already yes. awesome, and now he's really awesome. And I mean, it's better if if he if Yugi doesn't find out he has three blue eyes until their next duel. But also, I kind of do like the foreshadowing that like they they're like they're like inserting Kaiba into more episodes. Yeah. I like that. I I I, I kind of wish there were more epi- I kind of wish there were literally any episodes you played Duel Monsters where Kaiba wasn't involved. But also, this is the first episode where Dark Yugi is just not involved. Oh yeah, huh? Yeah, Dark Yugi is just not in this episode because he can only transform if he's in contact with the Millennium Puzzle. Hmm. The episode is literally called "Can't Transform." Yeah, it, really, it is. <laughs> it really is. Which is a very weird title because, from the perspective of Yugi, he is not transforming. He does not know way, that he does that. But by hmm. the way, I, yeah. I just want to say I, I am admittedly like playing Duel Links in the background right now. Can That's I just funny. say that Cosmo Brain is a broken ass card? Cosmo Brain, uh, Cosmo Brain. I don't know. What basically, that is. you can send any card on the field or in your hand to the graveyard. And then special summon it with attack equal to that monster plus two hundred. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Cosmo Braid is the is the smaller version of Cosmo Queen. Yeah, what does that no, do? Really, it's real, uh, it does nothing. It's a shitty nil up from like the first set. Oh, because it's this uh, thing, like I just straight up just sent a blue eyes to the graveyard, and this thing came yeah, out with three hundred, okay, three thousand so... three hundred act. Attack points. It's like, yeah, I think at points. one point Cosmo Queen was the was the spellcaster monster with the most attack points. Yes, it was. But it was it was a McDonald's promo, so no one had it. Yes. Fucking Meteor Dragon is a is a McDonald's promo. Oh, and like, I also I get... have first aid squad in my as a trap card, so I can just get that blue eyes right back again. I mean, I guess it makes sense because we never got the anime movie that that Meteor Dragon was in in America. So why why would we even care about Meteor Dragon? But seriously, this is uh-huh. this is the Meteor Dragon is like the card that the was in the movie. It was a big deal, McDonald's. Uh, I just yeah. love that. Like, I can fucking send any random card to the fucking graveyard. Summon this, and then use a trap card to get that card back again. So I don't even have any penalty for summoning this now ridiculously overpowered monster. Just imagine if the first time that the Exodia, the Forbidden One, was ever released in America, it was, you got it with a McDonald's. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. It would almost be like having half the cast of the original Bionicle line as McDonald's characters. Oh, wait. Mm. Oh, fuck that. Oh, fuck that. That that did. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's the Mi- the Mictor the Mictorin were Meteor Dragon all along. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Troop Dragon, Josie. It's just Troop Dragon. Again. Oh God, you should you since we're on Yu Gi Oh, you need to explain that. <laughs> okay, so I, I used to play I used to play you I used to play uh, Yu Gi Oh Pro with Liam a lot. Uh, he I I wanted to give him to I wanted him to engage with my interests because that's what friends do and uh, I I offset my relative not skills with card game by psychologically manipulating my opponent like they do in the anime and what I would do is I would just constantly recycle troop dragon from my graveyard back into my deck. <laughs> So that, and I would, and I would train Liam to think that every time I play a monster into defense mode, it's just Troop Dragon. And, <laughs> and so, and eventually, Penguin Soldier or Nimble yep, Momonga. Yep. Eventually, Liam would get used to the idea that every every time I play a monster, it's just Troop Dragon, and I would lure him into a false sense of security. And then sometimes it would not be Troop Dragon, not Troop <laughs> Dragon at all. It would be Penguin Soldier, Nimble Mamanga, just a bunch of flip monsters that would actually be, you know, bad to destroy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, since then, there is now a good, a new version of Troop Dragon that works with cards other than Troop Dragon, and I'm very happy. Oh, no. Uh, no, it still only works with low-level dragon types, but it can work with any, it, it's any low-level dragon type. So it's useful for, it's useful for red eyes and blue eyes decks now. Oh, and it's, it's probably also worth noting that this was your Exodia deck. 
Yep, yep, my Exodia deck was also a stall deck, because I hate the world and humanity. But it was also just like, it was it was completely built around this stupid troop dragon meme. Yep, in the in the Yu-Gi-Oh community, Exodia and stall decks are the worst to play against, and I played both at once. <laughs> So all Exodia this, is, is not very good. It's just very it's, annoying. It's not very good, but it's very annoying. It uh, sure you would, is. Yep, yep. It's it's really weird that in the anime, Exodia is considered like the top dog of Duel Monsters. He's the biggest. He's the biggest cheese. He's the best one. Exodia is kind of shit. <laughs> Exodia is kind of shit. You have to have five cards in your deck, and if you draw any of them. It's a dead draw. You va- you basically it's you basically you you wasted a draw. Um unless you draw all five. And then it's good. But if um Yeah. So like we'll talk about it when we get there. But like Yugi pretty much points out the flaw with Exodia in his second duel involving Exodia. Like it's it's amazing. Like the like they're like the the biggest card in the game, basically, and they point out the flaw with it the second time we ever see it in game. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Anyway, where, where we're we are moving on? Uh, episode we were talking 16. about something. We were talking about uh, something other than card games. Let's go. Episode sixteen. Yeah, uh, episode sixteen. It's the the corrupt doctor. I hate him. Oh yeah, but also, same. like, I was so excited when I saw that golf club. I thought, oh my god, is Yu-Gi-Oh, is Yu-Gi-Oh, is there going to be an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh where they play fucking golf? In a hospital. Is Yu-Gi going to play fucking golf? And, they and do. then, and then they do! <laughs> but instead of using a golf club, Yu-Gi uses a doctor's stethoscope. A golf! Me plays golf with a flick shot! <laughs> It's fucking great. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so I said that the like that, that the Ferris that, wheel. That, that, Yugi I, has never been more Jotaro than he was in this episode. <laughs> yes, I yes. said that the fair. I said that the Ferris wheel was my favorite episode. The Ferris wheel was my favorite episode for serious. This was my favorite episode for jokes. <laughs> yes, this was my favorite episode for funnies because oh my god, like, he, had to have he played like a fucking schematic of this building in his head. They play yeah. fucking golf, and Yugi uses a stethoscope as a slingshot instead of a golf club. <laughs> I fucking love it. Anyway, so this is the episode where they introduce Joey's sister. Yep, and, and introduce- um, he be. She means the only episode with Joey's sister. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. I actually don't give a shit about anything that happens in this episode, except that this doctor is an asshole. He really likes yeah. golf. So Yuki plays golf with him and this does his girlfriend sleep shot. <laughs> but yeah, yeah um, and uh, so Joey's sister is super, super fuck. And uh, her nurse is very plain looking, but Joey develops a crush on her because because I guess he really likes that she's taking care of his sister. She's going beyond yeah. and be- yeah. she's going above and beyond. So I guess, yeah. but like I, I mean, Taya is hotter than this nurse. Uh, Why would he have a crush on her? Uh, Joey's just, just really horny, but also he really likes his sister, so therefore, if there's a woman nice to his sister, he has to bang her. <laughs> and then, this this is like the only time when the show was so awkward that I had to just take a break, and I had to pause it and do something else for a bit. Because, Trist- Joey asks Tristan, Hey, I, 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 li- I have a crush on that nurse, what do I do? Here, give her this, give her this, uh, this, uh, gift bag that I've just been carrying this whole time. That <laughs> was work. Favorite, it. I think my favorite part is not just that. My favorite part is that of all the people you ask for advice, you ask the ultimate simp Tristan who couldn't 
to get a girl to well, it's because like, it's because I don't think he knows that the puzzle thing was Yugi's idea because the puzzle thing was a good idea, but I don't think he knows about it because like he never found out that that one girl had a crush on him, and by the end of that episode, she didn't have a crush on him anymore. It was really stupid and pointless. <laughs> but yeah, so like if he had talked to Yugi, Yugi would have given him a good idea, but he didn't talk to Yugi. Um, and so he talked to Tristan, who just handed him a bag. Joey didn't look inside to see what it was, and Tristan just said, give her this, and it'll work right away. It, it, women like it, like men who can provide for them, so here's this. And so Joey gives the nurse this thing, he doesn't know what it is, and oh, it's a, so it's a bra? Stupid. It's a yeah, bra. Uh, it's a bra, and she's not, ha- she is very annoyed that this kid just walks up to her and hands her a bra. Like, so she throws it at an old guy who has a heart attack because it's so hot because, oh, a bra just fell on my head. Uh, suddenly, I'm horny. Oh, no. The, all of the blood in my body just went into my penis because I'm a hundred years old. Oh, no. Absolutely Help, nurses. Erect. Nurses. Yeah. Nurses. Nurses, I don't have enough enough blood to sustain an erection. Help me! There's a yeah, bra on my head. This episode was that that scene was so dumb. I I like that, I that's, when he went and that, asked Tristan for help. I thought it was so funny. Oh no, that stupid. Oh no, like, that whole sequence was hilarious. But I have anxiety, so it was it, that epi- that sequence was so awkward that I just had to stop and take a break for a bit. But I admit it was definitely hilarious. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm glad it happens. Like, why the hell would you ask? I just can't. Like, why would you be like, mm, I should ask the most unsuccessful person I know at dating. Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> I should. I should ask. I this should ask. Been fawning after Miho for like an entire like year. Yeah. <laughs> I should. I should ask the worst person ever. You know what? I just realized we've been on this long. We haven't even mentioned that Tristan is like a janitor and he constantly oh, yeah. talks. <laughs> he constantly. That's like his whole character is. I am a bu- the school beautification manager, and that means it's my duty to clean up stuff. All over. And I really stretched the definition of that to fit whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah. I read, and, and I didn't know this, but apparently Tristan ran for president once. That's neat. Yeah, he did. And he, he lost because he's a fucking loser. Yeah. So anyway, um, I really hope Joey's sister doesn't find out that he gave her, nur- he gave her nurse a bra the day she was <laughs> fired. Also, she was fired because... The the jackass doctor hit on her, and she was all like, this is really unprofessional, you should really stop being a dickhead. And he was all like, well, I'm the best doctor in this hospital, even though all of my patients die. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah. Like, the episode start. the episode starts with one of his patients flatlining, and, in, and it's implied throughout the episode... All, a lot of his patients die. He has a very bad track record, but for some reason he's a, he's got like a top level administrative position at this hospital, so he can just do whatever the fuck he wants. He he actually will walk out of surgery to go golfing sometimes, yeah. apparently. And uh, so he gets this nurse fired because she wouldn't because she wouldn't sleep with him, or some or because she was rude to him or whatever. And mm-hmm. uh, Joey's sister really needed her. And, um, Joey had a crush on her because his sister needed her, I guess. And Joey finds out that this dude got her fired and is all, and it's all like, Hey, I know you got her fired and I'm going to tell the, I'm going to tell your boss to, that you did this and you're going to get in trouble. And then he says, well, uh, did you know that even if I am in trouble, I still am an administrator and can get your sister thrown out of this hospital? Yeah. I yeah, thought the that's... implication was that she, he was going to get the sister killed. I mean, if he gets her kicked out of the hospital, she will die. She's very sickly, apparently. Hmm. Um, I although... she's sick with... Well, um, in in um in the Duel Monsters anime, it seems to be she's going blind or something. Yeah, 
I mean, yeah. I guess that won't kill her, but, but whatever. The point is, this guy's a dickhead and, and uh, blackmails Joey into not tattling on him. Mm-hmm. And uh, then Yugi finds out, and that's very bad for this guy. Yeah. And then the greatest sequence of all time happens, and I love it. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very happy that I watched this and that it happened. Yeah. Yugi, uh, I... Yugi, okay, so the guy thinks that he's already won. Yugi just, just hits the ball with a slingshot stethoscope into a room, into nowhere, and he's all, and so like, oh, it'll be really easy for me to hit the ball. Oh, also, they're playing golf indoors in, in an abandoned wing of the hospital, I guess, that there's one of those. Yeah. But, uh, so the goal, the goal Uh, is to hit the- I'm sorry, I'm just imagining, or like, before Yugi confronts the guy. He's just walking around this building, mapping it out in his head. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyway, so the goal is to hit the ball to one room, specifically. I don't know what the room is, but, uh, so Yugi hits the ball into a completely different room, and the guy is all like, oh, I guess I've already won, so I'm gonna take my sweet-ass time to do this. By the time the guy makes it to the room and gets the ball in, and he thinks he's won, Yugi's ball just rolls on out. It's like, what? Oh, fuck, I've lost. I'm the one who is lose. And Yugi's all like, yeah, bitch, the mail shoot. You don't know your own hospital, bitch. Hmm. He knocked the ball into the mail chute! Yep. And, it, and it came out into the room that it was supposed to be in, and he won. Yep. Oh, so then Yugi summoned a horde of zombies that I, I am just going to assume are the, are the remnants of every patient this doctor has ever let die. Yes, yeah, that, that's what I got out of it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, this dude is so fucked up in the end that he has the wherewithal to, like, Yugi just plays recordings of him being a dickhead on a radio on loop, so when people find him like this, they know that that he fucked up. Mm-hmm. And this dude is all like, yep, it's all true! <laughs> I love golf more than my patients! He literally says that. Yep. He does. <laughs> Because y- Yugi fucked this guy up so hard that he's not even pretending anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, yep. it's that That's the funniest bit, really. Yeah. I, another bit that I find quite funny is um is the part right at the end then, when Joey finds out that uh, the nurse was just, she was going to leave anyway, because uh, she has a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, um, Joey's sister had told, um, that, had told Joey that that she doesn't have a boyfriend, but it turns out she does have a boyfriend. They, she just is really professional and doesn't bring her boyfriend to work. Yeah. She was kind of angry at a guy for hitting on her at work. Why would she bring her boyfriend to work? She was pro- she probably would have been thrilled to have a- to have Joey hand her a bra in public, but not in the hospital. That's a weird that was a weird statement. That's a weird thought. If Joey had just waited until after work to give her a bra, maybe she would have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This show is weird. I love it. Uh, What's next then? The uh, the what is this? The the Eileen Rao episode. Yeah. Ah uh, yes. Oh, uh, the tall the tallest woman in the world. Yep. Who's also hot and has mind control powers? What is this? The fetish episode. There's a lot of fetish yeah. episodes here. Uh, uh, I love this episode. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty great. And uh, grandpa, be- grandpa being a dirty old man again, he confesses to watching uh, women's aerobics videos because of the hot women. That's so funny. <laughs> and uh, oh, un- I forgot unlike- about this back back when we were talking about the first episode. But why does he have a little keyhole he can look through Yugi's look through into Yugi's room? That's uh, a lot of a lot of parents. A lot of parents have that. Pretty weird too. A lot of a lot of parental figures have that in all, uh, not just Japan. Hmm. I see. It's it's weird. It's uh, it's because uh, it's because children don't have uh, privacy rights. Remember? Yeah. 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 Uh, the the parents basically own the kids, and uh, Yugi ha- apparently Yugi had a mother in the manga, but we never ever 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 see her in anywhere ever again. Yeah, she hmm. exists. Ever. 
is not like dead or anything. Not his parents aren't dead. They just don't exist. They just don't show up for no reason. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's weird. Yuki's grandpa might as well be his dad. Hmm. Uh Yuki Yuki's grandpa is like Indiana Jones and Indiana Jones' dad all in one. That'll make sense. That'll make sense in fi- in like five seasons from now. Okay. What I just said. I should have sure. said that. I should have said that then, not now. Anyway, um, so yeah, Eileen Rao is the third of Kaiba's game masters, and uh, and uh, she she's a su- she's cool. a supermodel. She's ridiculously tall. Why is she so tall? Why is she so tall? Why does she have a fucking tiger? Um, <laughs> yeah. An Indian supermodel. There you go. Well, well half Indian. Uh, half I'd um, have a tiger if I could. Well. <laughs> Uh, Liam, this episode is is cross promotion for Tiger King, <laughs> which is uh, um, I don't know why Netflix is so surprised that that show got popular. They released it during Apparently a pandemic. A movie with Nicolas Cage playing. Yep. Um, what's this? Uh, Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. Yeah. Everyone talks about it. I've absorbed a lot of this culture already. Car- Carol Baskins Car- killed her husband. Something. Something. I something. Tigers. No, I know absolutely nothing about it. I know very little about it, but I've absorbed enough of the pop culture to get the general idea. Vinny talks about it a lot. Everyone I know talks about it a lot. Everyone, everyone, everywhere. It's very popular. No one, ha- no one else has anything to do. Liam, I watched. I wa- We watched Yu-Gi-Oh season the season zero. I've been a fan of this franchise since before there were four. Since before there were more than four booster packs in America, and I've never even thought about about getting about getting around to watching season zero. And I watched it now because we're all just bored as shit. Yeah. Fucking tigers! Yeah. She has a pet tiger and my and hypnosis powers, and she's tall as fuck. Yeah. Yep. Well, it, she says she doesn't so much have hypnosis powers as she's just really good at convincing people to to do that's, what she says. That's all. She has very she has semi realistic hypnosis powers. Yeah. In real life, that in real life, that's all hypnosis is. She has suggestion powers. Yeah. So that's why she can only brainwash Taya because she because Taya already trusts her and will do what she says. And yeah. so when when uh, Eileen Rao says to do something ridiculous, she does it. Yeah. Like uh, just hold a ridiculous ballet position forever and don't move. Even if a tiger comes to eat you, just don't move. Apparently, she's not even conscious while it happens because. Uh, as soon as the shadow game they play is over, she just snaps right out of it and assumes that Yuki just broke into the fucking dance room that they're in. They're in a dance yeah, room. Yeah, it's very strange. We're just yeah, skipping like, ahead. Okay, so there. Yeah. So Eileen Rao is like shows up to Yuki's game shop and is all like, "Hey, you're a fan of me. I invite you to my house." But she's really just saying that because she sees Yuki there and she knows she's it. Ka- Kaiba hired her to fuck with Yugi, and yeah. she thinks and she thinks the easiest way to get to Yugi is to invite his crush to her house. And you think it, she that thinks, works? She thinks Tay is his girlfriend explicitly, and yeah. oh, she she might as well be. They hang out all the time. Yeah, really though. Before. Yeah, uh, so yeah, Taya Taya wants to be a dancer, and Eileen Rao has a dance studio in her room in her house. So uh, she she invites her in, say hey. Uh, get eaten by a tiger, and uh, then she plays um Indian incarnation of chess. Kinda. Yeah, I don't know with what Yugi, yeah, Yugi, a with Yugi. Um, I think this is uh, this is probably a real game, but the rules make no sense because it's chess, but you you move one piece at a time, and don't you don't see what you. Hold on. I'm, I'm game is up. like rock. The game is like rock paper scissors, but with more parts. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, when they were when they were setting it up, I thought it was going to be chess, but yeah, then it was rock paper scissors, lizard Spock. Uh, okay, so okay, yeah, I'm looking see. up now, it doesn't seem to be a real game. It's it's just in Yu Gi Oh. Okay, yeah, it's called Raijin Ra- Ra- Raijin High. It, it, yeah. Is said to have originated in in India. I thought it may be a real thing, but I guess it's not. Hmm. Because all of the research they 
spent all of the research they put in other cultures was spent on Japan. They, I mean, on on Egypt. They had no other research, and frankly, they didn't research Egypt a whole lot either. Hmm. We'll get to that in season two. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. They they play this game, and and Yugi learns how to uh, read her poker face. I guess. Uh. Now. See the the thing like she she does this thing th- she does the same thing basically throughout the entire game. She well okay. Say it with me guys. You may know everything I'm going to do and that's but that's not going to help you because I know everything oh, you're going to oh, do. Strange, strange, isn't it? Oh fuck, I forgot that was a thing we do so I wasn't even going to bother doing it. Oh crap. Ah. <laughs> You may know everything I'm going to do, but I want to thank you to do to make a favorite private phrase. You Spooky, tried. isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they do Leanne, basically I, do that. I, I, I would not describe what I just did as trying, but alright. Also, this is apparently the first character in the entire series that actually learns something and doesn't get mind crushed. Yeah. S- say what now? Oh, right, yeah. Good for uh, her. So ba- Basically, I I think I think by I think at this point Yugi Yugi realizes that these people Kaiba are ha- is hiring aren't actually trying to kill his friends, but they want him to think they are. Yeah. So he, so he just like uh, he's like he's not gonna he's not gonna he's not gonna mind crush people for fucking doing their jobs. Like this lady his, was hired. His punishment for her is basically uh you feel bad about it I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. In a way, that's kind of Kaibu's punishment in the end. Yeah, yeah. kinda. I mean, it's just Kaiba has a lot of bad to feel about, so he go, he does go comatose a bit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, next episode. Yeah. Oh, uh, um. So so uh, Yugi goes to save Taya now that she's not being eaten by a tiger, and and she slaps him. Because she thinks that he's breaking into the dance studio. Is that yeah. really a slappable offense? Well, it, it's that... like breaking into the dance studio and interrupting her while she's uh, doing what Eileen says. This is stupid. Yeah, kind of. Alright, anyway, so yeah. you, so Eileen goes to Kyber and said, Hey, uh, I, I also lost. And Kyber's all like, You failed me! You're fired! Yep. But yep. wait, d- wait. So you're the only one allowed to defeat Yugi, but also you want them to defeat Yugi? Yeah, it's very strange. I told you it didn't make much sense. Yeah, the ending of this the ending of this episode doesn't make much sense. The whole episode doesn't make much sense. Yeah, and then anyway. even though she was fired, uh, you know, yeah, she, shows, she shows up yeah, yeah. later. <laughs> like nothing ever happened. Yeah. This is weird. It's a weird episode. Next. Yep, uh, ne- next up, don't touch the forbidden game. Uh, Yugi makes a friend, and the friend has a cursed game, and then the cursed game makes him My bad. mind was blo- My mind was blown when I saw this, because... It's it, a Yu-Gi-Oh this- card. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. There is an actual oh. card of Dragon Block. Is Dragon Block a real thing? Yes, it's from the manga. Yeah, oh, the- no, I mean, is it real? real? I'm is, certain- is, there, is there a game that can destroy the world? Hmm. I no, I mean, know. like, is there a game? Yes, is there it's a game? A war. Is there a game that's like a jar with a block on it, and it's it, let it's me look it scary? up. I never thought to look this. Sh- this okay, up. no, let it's look it up. I it's, doubt it's based on it's based on mahjong. Like mahjong. That's okay. what I thought it was. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Well, uh, I called it Japanese Scrabble, so now I feel racist. <laughs> yes, Dragon <laughs> Block. Shows up. It's a card game, though in the in, in the manga. But this hmm. became a Yu-Gi-Oh card later on. Called let me get the stupid name. F- Farukazin. For, no, not that. That's a different card. Farukazin is a different card. Soul eating jar, but in Ch- uh, Z- Jing Zhen Hu. Yes, that's it. Jing Zhen Hu. I'm gonna get hmm. the link for everyone to look at. Curtis, put it up on screen, wearing a hat and a mustache and a dog. Uh, Many dogs. Dogs everywhere. 
If you if you post it in the chat, then I'll I'll put it up. <laughs> did I do that? Not yet. No. I put it in off-topic general. Why did I oh, do that? That's not the right uh, chat. Okay. Re <laughs> recording general. Recording general. Recording general. There it I posted is, it three is. times. Shing there it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Like, I lost my shit. I lost yeah. my shit. I lost this my. Card. This card sucks. Don't ever play this card. Yep. I lost oh, okay. my shit when I. I lost my shit when I saw this because ah, oh, I recognize that from the thing. But, ha -ha! Yeah, here you go. There's the picture of it. I knew and, what it did, uh, and I knew what it looked like, but I can't oh, remember its name because no one. Plays oh, and it. the na the name the name the English name is Chinese for jar of soul suppression, which is what it is in this in this. It's called it's called the soul stealing jar, and huh. that's the name there of the card that's in what it Chinese is. for some reason. I'm confused. because it's based on Chinese principles, I guess. I don't know. It's oh oh apparently there's a new version of it that looks exact. The what? The, okay, there's a this is another one. It look, <laughs> replica. This, okay. Okay, select one spell. I mean, it's better than the other one. I think. Yu-Gi-Oh is weird. This this card game is broken as hell. Yeah. But, um, wait, no. The the replica is just the same thing, but less. Oh, uh, read. There's another one. I didn't even know there was another one. Yeah, it, it, oh, it's identical. It literally. Oh yeah, it's called, the replica. It's so, called like, Xingjing Hu replica, and it looks like it. The, the artwork looks the same, but like touched up a bit. Yeah. Yes. It's. This it's card sucks even more. Yeah. Um. Huh. Yu-Gi-Oh is a weird game where sometimes they'll make a reach, they'll make a, a new version of a of an old card, and they might make it better or they might make it worse. And sometimes the logic doesn't make any sense. They've done it to a lot of Yu-Gi and Kaiba and Joey's cards. There I guess some, there are some cards that they've done really good jobs, like actually like making better. Like uh, as I mentioned earlier in the like the other day in the chat, there's. The Virgin White Stone of Legend versus the Chad White Stone of Ancients. I recently found I recently found out that they've done a new version of Meteor Dragon and Black Meteor Dragon from the movie, and I love it. Yeah, those, Black they, Meteor those cards. Dragon, the, Black those Meteor cards Dragon are actually. Edition. Yeah, those cards are actually worth a shit now. I mean, they're not. Yeah. I mean, Black Medi the new Black Meteor Dragon is just called Black Meteor Dragon, the Meteor Dragon. It's yeah. it's a very it's a very stupid card name, and it's basically just Catapult Turtle. Uh, the new Black Meteor Dragon has an FTK with it. I've got FTK'd by it before. Yep. It's annoying. Well, there. Well, yeah. It's it's just Catapult Turtle, but from the deck. So yeah, it's. And let me tell you, when we get to season one, we're going to have lots of words about catapult turtle. Let me tell you. Okay, oh, I God, look forward to it. Right, you're 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 not joking. Let me tell you, catapult turtle. We're gonna we're, we're probably like we 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 tend these episodes tend to drag on a lot when we do them. We're gonna spend a lot of time on catapult turtle. Let me tell you something. Anyway, let me yeah, tell you something right here. Catapult fucking turtle. Like if you thought if you thought the dollhouse made no sense, just you wait. Okay. So anyway, you're gonna to shit to yourselves laughing. Back to the show that we're talking about. Uh, so Yugi plays this game against the guy, you know, the cursed game, whatever. Uh, Yugi yeah, actually the, the loses. one that is great. Okay. Uh, yeah, he he loses because uh, he's not dark he's not, Yugi yet because yeah, he doesn't know. Because uh, even though the, even though his grandpa explicitly told him that this is a cursed game that should never be played, and an island was destroyed while this when this kid played it before, and uh, they had to. So this the, kid is literally Darby. And the door yeah. to get the this room this game was kept in a in a locked room behind a door that was a puzzle. The entire door. It, it, it was just a door. It, like they didn't even know it was a door. It was a wall that they had to rearrange like a puzzle. And it was like, yeah, this game is some puzzle. serious. This is some serious bullshit. And you and Yugi doesn't change for this. And then he does because Yugi's soul got taken. This I I was like, oh wow, Yugi's soul got fucking taken. Holy shit.
but it's okay because uh, he's luckily, got two it's okay. souls. It's okay. He's got two of those. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's okay. Uh, Dark Yugi's in, Dark Yugi was able to influence his other self to just grab onto the Millennium Puzzle just in time. Because also, okay, I remember now. He was he didn't change because the kid had stolen the Millennium Puzzle. Oh, that's, that's right. That's what yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's okay. Yugi doesn't need to be wearing it. He just needs to be touching it. So yeah. he so he was able to reach out to it just in time, uh, mm -hmm. and before his soul was taken, his soul wasn't taken because he's got two souls, two souls, and he's all yeah. like, "Okay, kid, okay, kid. Now, now it's now it's game. Now it's it's the real shit. You're, mm -hmm. you're gonna play real times now." Yep, and then they they played some more of the game, and and Yugi won. I don't understand how the rules, but Yugi won. <laughs> Um, I understand yeah, even so, less how the ending worked because uh, to, to keep this character alive, they just made it so that the game only stole the bad bits of his soul for some okay, reason. Okay, here's here's what happened. The so the soul, so the jar, the jar already had a soul in it, a, some sort of evil soul in it when the kid found it, and yeah, that soul and that like soul. And that soul possessed his body. Yes. And the the jar sucked that soul back into it when Yugi beat him. And now the kid's okay. fine. It yeah. this, the game makes no the game made no sense. Um, so basically, the rules for the final for the final battle was, it's like rock paper. The game is like rock paper scissors. You summon the dragons. And some of the dragons are strong against some of the other dragons. Some of the dragons are weak against other dragons. And in the first game the kid played with Yugi, both of his dragons were super effective against Yugi's dragons. So that's why Yugi yes. lost. But in the battle with Dark Yugi, it was basically like a recursion loop where all of the the dragons were all equally matched, like. Uh, like, they both had a dragon that was weak to one and strong against the other. Right. So basically, basically, it was it was less of a game of the rules of a board game clashing and more of just dragons fighting. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> it that. Yeah, so basically, like, the rules of the game just stopped mattering. What mattered now was which dragon was just, just, just more beefy. Hmm. Basically... Basically, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! became a real anime for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. It truly did. Yep. Anyway! Yeah, so Yu-Gi-Oh! is sold back and... and uh, all anyway, <laughs> so I lost my shit when this episode started, but it wasn't really that engaging. I mean, it was cool to see a game that actually... Like, this is the first time, I think, where one of the games in Yu-Gi-Oh! actually, you know, had consequences and real stakes. Cause like a whole island just just sank. Yeah, yeah, they this can't game was some, over that. <laughs> yeah, this game was some serious shit. And uh, if if Dark Yugi had lost his game, Tokyo, the whole city of Tokyo, would have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't uh, live in yeah. Tokyo. They're in Domino City. Well, no, he the kid said he was going to destroy Tokyo. Yeah, uh, yes. specifically. Lived in Domino City, so it wouldn't have affected them. Yeah, yeah. like it. See, the 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 soul, the evil soul that was possessing the kid didn't want to kill the kid because that would kill him or it, yeah. whatever it was. Mm -hmm. We don't know what that was, but the point is, point is the soul. Like I guess Tokyo was where the people who banished the soul to begin with is from, because he said. That place is, is real bad for, for me, so I want it gone. Oh. I, guess, I, I, I guess. I don't know. I guess. But the point is, the point is, there are going to be a lot of times in Yukio where the fate of the world is hinged upon children's card games and other such things uh, that don't matter. And this is the first of those instances where the fate of the world is, is hinged on a thing that doesn't matter. A fucking yeah. game of Bajong. Speaking of things that don't matter, how about that popularity contest episode? Oh god oh, damn. Fucking... Oh my god, that that lady was a bitch. That lady yeah. was actually- that lady was withdrawn in such a way that she was only attractive when she wasn't angry. Yeah. And I kinda like that, 
they they drew her in such a way that you can tell why she's pop you can tell why she's popular when she isn't being a bitch but when she is being a bitch she just looks like an ugly version of Android 18 <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can see it yeah um, but so, uh, yeah, yeah so they have a popularity contest and uh, Joey enters even though the other contestants are all women and there's going to be women-centric contests, like a bikini contest, uh, yeah. like a bikini, like a biki- like a swimsuit competition. And shit. Which he was totally so, down to enter, by the way. Like he yeah, showed no he, reservations about that. Oh no, because there was a scene. There was a there was an entry where they had to do where they had to model sexy dresses, and Joey appeared in all drag, like. This is some character development right here. He got in the fortune teller episode. He was he was embarrassed to try to ask the fortune teller for a fortune because all the other people asking for fortunes were girls, and here he's all like, "I am the girl now." Yeah, <laughs> and, and let, let me just say, he rocks that dress. Okay, so based so the reason he does this, the reason he does this is because uh, the prize for this popularity contest is. Tickets to Beauty and the Beast, which that the movie just came out a couple years before this episode aired. So I guess the music, I guess the Broadway musical was super popular. Those tickets. Yeah. Joey wasn't interested in the musical. He just wanted to sell the tickets to pay off some debts that his father owed, or maybe a bicycle that he broke, or something. I don't uh, remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Joey's father's a piece of shit. <laughs> we only yeah. said what, but he's already. Yeah, we don't even see Joey's dad. We just see it. We just they they go to his house and they open the door and Joey's dad just throws a bottle of alcohol at them and they're like, "Well, we're not doing that again." Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and uh, so this this be- this popularity contest was Tristan's idea because Tristan was having a meeting at the beautification at the student body council. It's like, "Hey, we want to win- I want to inc- we want to increase the budget for the beautification council or whatever fuck is that thing I'm in. That thing yeah. I'm in because we-, we want more money for plastic bags or whatever." And the vice principal, the no, no the vice pre- the student body vice president, why is he the vice president? Shouldn't he be the regular president? Mm. He says that he'll he he's diverting all of the money to the fan club for this one girl who's popular. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he makes he makes a bet that he makes a bet with Tristan that if Tr- if Tristan's crush can beat his his crush in a beauty contest in a popularity contest, then he'll increase the budget for the thing okay yeah. so a few episodes ago it was illegal for students to have part-time jobs or carry any personal items to school but now they can have horny clubs for other students <laughs> and they can have a whole suit. popularity contest <laughs> and they can have swimsuit competitions in the school gymnasium or auditorium or whatever the fuck this air er- this building is that they're in yes <laughs> Like, yes, yes, uh, it is perfectly acceptable for for women to strip in front of the entire student body. It makes, it, it, it's, no, underage women. So, yes, per- yeah. perfectly acceptable to, uh, to do, yeah, yeah, look, did, look, did, look, did, yeah, did set them. you ever go to school? That, that yeah. was happening, like, every day. Yeah, set them titties free. All them titties. Yeah. Anyway. You so uh Josie's Josie likes setting titties free. Well, yep. Yep. Anyway, so popular bitch is a bitch and uh sabotages every other competitor except Joey who sabotages himself. Yep. Um so uh Taya drops out early, I think, or is it Miho who drops out early? Who drops out early? Taya cuz she couldn't do her little yeah. dance or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so she was gonna the, do a she was gonna do home. a dance, but popular bitch changed the music out of the boombox mm-hmm. to a hip hop song that was hard to dance to. I guess no, no, no it, it was supposed to be a hip hop song, and she changed it to like a cutesy song instead. Okay. Well, anyway, and uh, Miho is an oblivious asshole, so is an oblivious idiot. So just like 
nothing this this popular bitch could do could could uh, sabotage her. So yeah. what she did was she just she just chloroformed her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she really did. The chloroform be coming back. Yeah, yeah. Who would know that chloroform would be a recurring character in the show? Yeah, chloroform. It's a recurring character in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, so Yugi finds out about popular bitch because he finds Miho unconscious in an alley in a ripped up dress and she's got roses all over her and what do you know a popular bitch is wearing a rose in her hair so Yugi brings her a bouquet and says hey let's play draw the short straw or whatever the fuck this is and the, the loser has to dye his hair pink Drake and Josh jokes haha <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and she's like, "Oh, I, I'm gonna win because uh, I can count." And then Yugi's like, "Ha, psych! You can't count." Yeah, as it turns out, uh, Yugi says, "Okay, so we each take turns pulling roses out of this bouquet, and the la and the whoever draws the last rose loses. I mean, wins or something." Yeah, well, he, he specifically doesn't say out of the bouquet. He says uh, just out of the flowers you have. Yeah, and uh, it turns out the flowers she's wearing count. So Yugi's yep. all like, there, I got the flower out of your hair. Now there's only one flower left, and uh, you have to draw it, which means you lose. Mm -hmm. And her punishment is being aged infinity years, so she's super ugly now. Yeah. Well, only but mentally. Also, only yeah. mentally. And so she comes out on stage and drops a bucket of water on her head, and that means she loses. Yeah, I didn't understand Every, that either. Everyone's yeah, that's, that's everyone's probably depressed. a weird Japaneseism. That's that's a cultural thing. I've I've seen characters drop buckets of water on themselves before as a sign of surrender, but I don't know what it's for, what it means, why that's a thing. The point is, everyone's depressed. Nobody wins. This is this is a weird episode. Mio's fine though. Yeah, she. It does just kind been, of end with no one winning, doesn't it? Yeah, it's weird. But the bitch lost, and that's all that matters. I hated her. I, I guess so. I hated her. Mi Mio is much cute. Mio, Mio is much cuter. Yeah. I would have. See, I, I thought I saw it coming that Joey was going to win because that would have been the obvious joke. But this show really threw me for a loop and didn't take the obvious joke. Joey did not, in fact, win. Yeah. No, Nobody won. Funny. What? It, it, it would have been pretty funny if, if you know, it he just won been by funny. default because everyone else got disqualified. Yep. And, but, you see, then Joey would have paid off his debts or whatever the fuck. Uh, and can't, we can't, can't let have Joey that. get a win. Yeah. We, can't, we can't let Joey be happy. The only, the only thing that good that ever happens to Joey is that his, his sister doesn't, doesn't go blind in the end and he d starts dating a prostitute. Hey, Mai's not a prostitute. She just stresses like one. Yeah. <laughs> and I think she has the same voice actress as the four kids. As, uh, one of the four kids is Rouge the Bat voice actresses. Yes. I would yes, be yes. surprised that Practically all, yep. all the four kids shows have the same cast. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they did, Liam. I, I'm just trying to remember. I'm just trying to remember who did what. Yeah, specifically a, yes. uh, the Rouge the Bat. Um, so Lani you, Manila, I think her name is. Yeah, you don't even have to. You don't even have to know who my who my Valentine is to know from that name and that voice actress. Yeah, yeah, Rouge the Bat. Okay, so regardless, back to the show. Back to the show we're watching, and that show we're gonna watch in a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, Character yeah. got owned. Yes. What? what? <laughs> and then the next episode happened afterwards. Yeah, yeah, the, the next was... episode is, uh, oh, oh, it's the final, uh, uh Kaiba minion. It, it's oh, Daimon. Oh, God! It's, it's... I like... love this episode Dude! so much! Dude, okay, Kaiba's cyborg butler. <laughs> yeah. Hobson is so his... much cooler in this than he is anywhere else in the franchise! Come Holy me. crap! Resur is resurrected from the death stasis pod to go Duel Yugi. Yeah. And okay, then... so yeah, so basically when Kaiba was growing up, he was taught everything he knows about about games by his dad's butler. So he kept his butler on 
all on the most on the most scientifically advanced life support systems imaginable in case he needed someone who was really good at card games yeah. <laughs> yeah. then he resurrects him gets him to go play against Yugi he loses and then he what dies I don't know no um he doesn't die but he okay so basically he can only survive off the life support systems for three hours yes yes but after he loses Kaiba doesn't pick him up he just leaves him there to die that's yeah, a, oh he God. Probably, that's sad. He wouldn't have made it, I would assume. Yeah. Oh. But the money, though. Kaiba doesn't care. He lost. He's a failure. Zero. Anyway, so uh, for anyone who doesn't, for anyone who doesn't bother looking stuff up, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged, there's this character named Hobson, and he kind of sucks. Daimon is the Toei anime version of Hobson from. And uh, Hobson isn't much better in the manga. He, he also sucks. But in the Toei anime, he is awesome. I yeah. love him. He is awesome. He's like a he's like an old man zombie cyborg who's really good at card games. Like he actually challenges Yugi. I think I, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember the. De I don't remember the details of the game that they play at all, except that he has a card called Zombie Master, because he's, yeah. he's a zombie. You see, he's a zombie. So, uh, so he's being chauffeured around a place because Kaiba had a meeting, and I guess meetings are conducted via card games, and so he brought Diamond to play the card game meeting. And, um, and then he was going to take him back, but then Yugi accidentally stepped in front of the car, and the car crashed. So they took oh, Diamond yeah, to the happen. they they took Diamond to the poor people hospital instead of the Kaiba hospital. And the the poor people doctors are all like, we don't know what the fuck to do. None of this guy's organs are real. This guy's a this guy's like, <laughs> yeah. a, this guy's like a cyborg or whatever. And then Diamond wakes up and is like, yes, I am like a zombie. Hey, kid, I am actually incredibly healthy for my age, despite the fact that I'm dead. Do uh, you want yes, to play I a card game? Me. Hello. <laughs> and then they play a card game, and then Kaiba shows up and says, Yugi, what the fuck did you do to my butler? And then Diamond is all like, oh, so this is Yugi. What the fuck? He's not that great. And then yeah. he plays you. And then he plays Yugi again later, but in a wheelchair, a, a super fancy wheelchair that has life support already built in. Yes. And then, and the, the, but this well, time well, it, it doesn't Yugi. so much have life support built in as it has, uh, like, um, uh, tubes. Like painkillers, <laughs> tubes, yeah, painkillers that allow him to ignore the pain and focus solely on gaming. Yeah, ignore so he's Diamond still dying. He just can't feel it anymore. Diamond it's, is it's so weird. Bigger, Diamond, bigger. Diamond is so so cool that I almost don't even want to acknowledge that he's hot. That he's just Hobson. Because Hobson sucks so much. I know they're the same character, but like, they're so much not. Yeah. Like, I don't give. I don't like Tristan and Honda are interchangeable to me because they're the same guy, and neither of them has much of a character, even though they're different. Diamond and Hobson are so diametrically different that just like, fuck it. Yeah. I love it. It's great. I love uh, this I, episode. I, I love this episode as a character piece. It's my favorite. This is my favorite one of the characters. It's hmm. not my favorite episode, yeah, except yeah. it is. It's one of my favorite episodes. I love this show. I love Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I this really appreciate cool. the bit where where Kaiba tries to help him cheat by giving him like the goggles to let him see into the reflections of Yugi's eyes, and he's just like, "No, fuck that shit." No, I don't need to cheat. I'm really good at this. You remember me? I'm you, but the, I'm you, but better. And so, anyway, I really hope Diamond doesn't end up dying. But because this show is canceled, we never find out. Mm. And then his last word, his last words to Yugi before losing consciousness and hopefully not dying are, "Kaiba used to not suck. Please, please fix him. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. Help him not suck so much. Help him not suck so much. Yeah." And then Kaiba, like, Ka it, like this is the weirdest thing. The, the, just like, 
there's like a theme of oranges. Like uh, when Yugi's at the poor person hospital, he oh, peels yeah. an orange for he peels an ornament an orange for Diamond, and gives him the orange because it's good for you to eat oranges when you're sick. And then there's a flashback where where a Diamond is sick again, and Kaiba gives him an orange as a yeah. child because Kaiba didn't suck at some point. And then at the end of the episode, we see Kaiba walking back to his car. Being all angry and mean, huh? And there's a kid with an orange, and he knocks the kid down, and he and he walks, he walks past the kid, bumps into him, knocks the orange down, and he steps on the orange. Yeah, it's like symbolic or something. It's symbol symbolism with an orange, orangeism. I, f- I feel yeah. like they're underestimating the structural integrity of your average orange, and I'm pretty sure Kaiba would have just slipped and died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but no, 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 no. So no, 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 Kaiba isn't skinny as shit, he's, he's felt, he's felt. He is, uh, he's actually very, very strong. Do we ever see Kaiba with his shirt off? No, uh, but in, in, a, in, in series two, he's got abs and, like, muscles, but, because right. he's wearing a skin-tight fucking outfit underneath that weird white trench coat. Yeah, so like, uh, Kaiba yeah, is like. Everyone is jacked in Yu Gi Oh! So it's like not really surprising. Also, have you ever tried carrying a steel briefcase filled to the brim with trading cards and hologram <laughs> pro- and portable hologram projectors? Good oh, point. Clearly. <laughs> Yeah, like, like that briefcase is so heavy that Kaiba probably gets a decent workout just from going to work. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, yeah, so Daimon says, uh, yeah, Kaiba's kind of shit right now. And uh, we find out in the, in the next episode that, yeah, he's really shit because he kidnaps Yuki's grandfather. Yep. yep. De- We've made De- it! Death Tea! We've made yep. it to the first episode of Series 2. I mean, Death Tea. <laughs> We've made it. We've made it, friends. And this the is Death part of the show where Kaiba completely loses his goddamn mind and turns this entire... and makes... He makes a Saw version of Eggman Land. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, So in the manga, I think that I think the transition from the transition from Happy Go Lucky Fun Games, where everyone's kind of mean to each other and cr- on, there's a lot of violence, to holy shit, everything is the most violent shit ever. I think the transition makes a little bit more sense in the manga. Here, it's just like. Holy shit! Kaiba went from being a from being a playful asshole to just being m- what the f- what what the hell happened? Yeah, is he what the fuck happened? So like Kaiba like games. so like Kaiba opens up his amusement park and the cent and the central game of his amusement park is a fucking is a fucking death tower. <laughs> yeah, which I which um. It's homaged in season three of Duel Monsters. I, I appreciate the Duel Tower and Duel Monsters a lot more now that I've seen this. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know that was a reference to something from Death T. Death T. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so the so Yugi so Kaiba kidnaps Yugi's grandpa because I guess I guess Yugi needs needs uh, motivation to go to an amusement park. Yeah. Um, and, and he, uh... We, we completely negated the fact that he finds out about this because Mokuba hacked his video game. Oh, yeah, that did oh. happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so they so they go to a vi- they go to that same arcade they go to all the time, and it turns Mokuba out that... Uh, it's, and they finally... No, 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 they finally know... They, apparently, they've never noticed, but every single one of the games in the arcade... Has the same top high score a- 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 abbre- abbreviation K A I. I wonder so, who that could be. Well, they they eventually they figure out. Oh, it must be Kaiba, that fucking green haired no, douche. Figure it out. Somebody had to tell them. Yeah, well, some well, no, kids somebody show had up to tell say, them that it's the other Kaiba. Some kid, no. So yeah, they figure out it's Kaiba, but some kids show up and say, "Uh uh-uh, uh, Kaiba only plays card games." This is Mokuba Kaiba, his very effeminate brother who plays more than card games. He plays ca- cap- capsule monsters and video games. 
Well, we never see him playing the video games, but we do, I guess he played them at some point, off screen. Well, he, he has all the high scores, so. Yeah. Yep, yep. Anyway, so they play a racing game, but then a limo shows up and, and bombs them. And, yeah. And then, and then, Ka and then Seto Kaiba comes up on the screen and says, hey, kidnapped your grandpa, D do, shut up and do on me. Mm hmm So they go into the death tower and, and, they yeah. the first uh, the, the, the first game they have to the first well, game they have to play the is tower, there's this part okay. where they're they're walking uh, like through the mist or whatever and I could have sworn my video froze but no it, it's just like yeah I thought the frame. same thing like what is wrong with this episode right now yeah yeah because yeah. it went well, for like a full minute on one frame yeah <laughs> so so here's the thing um they got to they had to conserve the budget so they yeah. cut out really? the last. So they cut out the last minute of animation so that they could spend more money on Death Tea. Because I the guess so. because the first game they had to play for Death Tea is fucking laser tag with actual soldiers. And actual lasers. That was so funny. Well, no, they're not actual well, yes actually, no, they are actual lasers that hurt them. Yeah, it knocks yeah, Joey out. Yeah, well no, it knocked Joey out because they shot him in the in the in the light thingy, but the light thingy exploded. But if they get shot anywhere, they do get hurt. They just don't lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Tristan gets shot. He gets and shot also the yeah. and also the light thingies explode. So that hurts a lot. Hmm. But it anyway. turns out that but Miho falls asleep, and she, when she wakes up, <laughs> she she just frantically blasts ra just randomly all over the place and happens to hit all three of the soldiers <laughs> and not any of her friends. Yep. How how convenient. Joe, what the hell happened in the manga? <laughs> it wasn't Miho. Tristan had to bring along his little cousin. Excuse and me? His cousin, yes, he has a baby cousin who's a horrible pervert and wants to bang what? Anzu. But, yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, then. Oh, and then okay. I falls asleep, wakes up, shoots everyone. Pretty. Sure. I don't know. I don't know which it's, it's one of these. I don't know which. I don't know which one of these iterations is worse. Actually, I don't know which of these is stupider. I'm gonna go with that one. That one's stupider. I prefer the idea that a, an a, an established character yeah was <laughs> was an idiot and not that. Okay. Well. And then in the next game, there's a fucking steamroller with a typo for it, with a typo written on it, and Kai oh, was yeah. like, "Hey, figure out why this robot, figure out why this steamroller has a typo on it, or it's gonna steamroll ya." Yes, this isn't even in the manga. In the manga, <laughs> in the manga, it's Hobson, and he Hobson. Is, he they're in like a horror thing, and if anyone screams, they get electrocuted. Uh, oh. And uh. What happens this, is that's the baby steam, cousin that's... shit. The baby cousin crawls over to Hobson and shits on his pants, and he screams. Okay, <laughs> so another point I, goes I to have the. Miho do that. Okay, so another point goes to the anime here. I really like this, yeah. and not that. that was definitely better than Wha shit, baby. Yeah. Why do people like Death Tea so much? <laughs> well, I mean, Death. Tea is cool in concept, just shit babies not cool. Okay. <laughs> tea has a cool I name. Take any other episodes that were mostly one off. I mean, I guess. Yeah, well, thing. so the game here is they all have to pull on the lever, and when they all pull on the levers, the robot goes real slow. And when the, and if they release one of the levers, the the ro the steamroller goes faster. But if they release a specific lever then the steamroller stops completely and then they can yeah. then they win so they have to figure out and the levers all correspond to two digit numbers and they have to figure mm -hmm. out which one is the right one and it i was just screaming at the screen it's clearly fucking 11 the steamroller has the word blood written on it with two l's clearly yeah. number 11 is the right number yeah so basically you had to pick the the letter that was spelt incorrectly, so you'd pick eleven and yeah. get rid of the two L's. But then his name would be booed. So I was very confused. No 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 no. It's like it's it's the number it's the 
So, so when you're, if it's like an elementary school teacher crossing out in red. Well, who who just left? Oh, uh, it's James. He had to go. Oh. Ha okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're someone. Anyway. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, we're almost to the part where a character dies in Death Tea, so I guess James died in Death Tea. Yeah. There okay. You go. Uh, Chip, insert the sound effect of an an of an anvil falling on you in Minecraft <laughs> when he leaves. Oof. Yeah. And, anyway, no, no. It's more like a. It's more like a like a crunch noise. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but well, you gotta I... overlay the the Roblox booth. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> don't ever, don't ever say that name again. What Roblox? No. Don't. Yeah. Don't. No. Don't do that. Oof. Don't. Don't say Roblox. It's bad. Roblox. No. Oh my God. Anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, so, where so they beat this puzzle. So, yes. And then they get to the next puzzle, and it's just climb to the top, and blocks are falling, and uh, Tristan uh, saves Yugi, but gets trapped. And then yeah. think he's close. dead, but actually yeah, he's... he's not. Because Kaiba, yeah. I guess, Kaiba, I guess, thought, no, Lee, no, I can't be sued for this if no one actually dies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess, I, I... I... Well, no, okay, so it's Every... kind of weird, like, he takes Tristan out of there, and then puts him in a jar that's filling up with water along with Yuki's grandpa. So it's like... Tristan has never had anything... killing him anyway. To... Tristan has never had anything to do in the franchise, and he has even less to do going forward. I think if Tristan had died here, that would have been thematically appropriate. But no, um, I I don't get it. Yeah, I, no. I I I was actually hoping that he did die in the manga, but I I looked it up, and no, no, he didn't even die in the manga. No. Hmm. What, what oh, the well. crap? No, no one died in Death T. It, it's called Death T. You figured someone would die in the uh, in you, the arc called Death T. You think so? Maybe, maybe, but no. And then, anyway, so they pl anyway so they play real life Tetris. One of them dies, but not really. And uh, then they play Capsule Monsters. Yes. Yes, Yugi gets to play Mokuba and Capsule Monsters, and he beats him, and then, you know, Kaiba administers his punishment game on on uh, Mokuba, but then yeah. Yugi saves him. <laughs> Meanwhile, to rescue Tristan and Yugi's grandpa, Joey and the supermodel fight each other by being controlled by Lucky Dude and Taya. Yeah, so they wear oh, yeah, they wear Mio, Mio, Dante, they wear yeah, they wear robot exosuits that the other person controls with yeah. video game controls uh, and Mio, actually, wait, what, I guess. What is Taya doing during all this? Um, I don't remember. She's uh she's watching the duel. Oh yeah. Okay. Just, just watching. Or, okay. <laughs> yeah, she's just watching. She's watching the card game. Anyway, um, so like Miho, I guess, forgets that she played Joey in a fighting game earlier in the series and won and that she's actually really good at fighting games and that she could totally kick this dude's ass because... No, no, she says she's good at fighting games and then they, they play. Yeah, hmm. but like she, for a bit, for like a few minutes, she just forgets oh god, I don't know what I'm doing. And then she remembers and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm really good at video games for hmm. some anyway, reason. But she beats them and they rescue everybody and I don't yeah. remember what happens here in the manga. For... Well, um, the the first episode of Duel Monsters happens and uh, I w it was really trippy seeing this duel because it's like it's almost identical to the one from Duel Monsters. Yes, hmm. and then we get to see Yugi versus Kaiba and, and yeah. if you've seen the first episode yeah, that's, of Yu-Gi-Oh, you already know how yep, this shit goes. That's, so, that's what I just no said, yep. Cards in my, yeah, there's no weak cards in my grandfather's deck and blah blah blah. It's like Zodia, no one's ever summoned that before it gets out. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then <laughs> he hits him with the Mind Crush and we get that Yu-Gi-Oh card, Mind Crush. Pull the, Josie, grab Mind Crush and put it on screen. Alright, well, uh, Mind... Mind crush. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, um, uh, Kaiba brings out all three of his blue eyes. He thinks, ah, there's no way he can beat me. 
uh, then you be My grandfather's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba, but it does have the unstoppable Exultoff! Yes, yeah. brings out Exodia, uh, and beats him with that. And, uh, then he uses his, his shadow magic, whatever, to, to break Kaiba's evil heart into a million pieces, uh... Yep. Yeah, but it's called the mind crush. Maybe I guess, he'll like, come I... back to life if he's good. I just put the card. Yep. Perfect. I just, I, yeah, there it is. Mind crush. This is exactly what happens. Yep. Yep. And uh, so, uh, what what happens in the manga and the Duel Monsters anime and just every iteration of the franchise is Yugi has just separated Kaiba's mind into a good half and a bad half and they have to fight over control of Kaiba's body so that's why he looks dead. And then suddenly it becomes Evil Dead 3 Army of Darkness. Oh yeah uh, the evil Kaiba You're becomes good a ash and I'm e evil bad ash. So e e evil Kaiba becomes uh, an evil clone ghost guy and then... Oh the god that ghost... actually happens. And then the evil ghost guy becomes a clown. I was thinking the fucking okay. joke. No, no, no. Ghost Kaiba isn't. Uh, you'll see. It's it's so dumb. Yeah. Okay, you, I guess, you, I guess yeah, we'll you'll see. Become Army of Darkness. That's you'll see. Like, you'll see later. It's, it's really weird. Uh, but yeah, death he is over. Now uh, Bakura shows up. Yeah, now it's time for Bakura yeah. or, or, or Bakura. Bakura happens. Yeah. That, that the was... uh, the uh, actual main uh. villain of Yu-Gi-Oh that Kazuki Takahashi forgot about for the entire series after the after this arc. Well, <laughs> and of course, just... B Bakura is is younger Darby. <laughs> yeah, Bakura <laughs> Bakura was apparently at one, was apparently meant to be the final antagonist of Yu-Gi-Oh. But the franchise ended up lasting for so long, and Kazuki Takahashi well, can, just had no idea. That, 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 that's part of why I feel like they wasted this arc in the anime. Maybe it was longer in the in the, uh, um, the manga, but here they, it they, was like a couple of episodes tacked on to the end of Death T. Okay, but it so makes there... sense that he intended to be the the final villain of the series because up to this point. He's the only character that has also demonstrated having another soul from his Millennium Item. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the mo and okay, then... so in the manga apparently it's interesting. Uh, there's one episode of season one devoted to it, and then there is a complete redo of the Monster World arc in basically the finale of the series. Yes, it, it, it's a second version. They do it twice. This is the first time, and then they'll do it again at the end. Yep. So there is another yep. Yu-Gi-Oh! RPG with Bakura and Yami playing it together. Yeah, it's so basically... King Bakura there. So basically, Yu-Gi-Oh! was ending was already planned out, but the franchise just, end, just went on for so long, and uh, Takahashi just had no idea what to do with Bakura in the meantime. So that's why all the jokes in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! abridged about Bakura being meaningless, because Bakura was supposed to be the final boss, <laughs> and the final boss is just supposed to hang out and be friends with the protagonist for five seasons. So that's weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, then, so then, you know, they, they played yeah, this role no, playing game. Yeah, that, nobody, uh, was, nobody was expecting this franchise to become as popular as it was. Look, the role-playing game is kind of interesting because it has its own rules, and it's kind of like a board game and a you know yeah. role-playing yeah, game. Yeah, it's it's it. it's uh it's like and Dungeons also, and Dragons. It marks, it marks the first time that Yugi actually Being interacts strong. with uh, with a Tem. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this episode is so integral that they do they do just like completely just redo this whole arc in in season one. Of the, of the, wow, of the, yeah, I'm just looking at the do. Mind Crush card now. It even has the same graphic for when he Mind yeah. Crushed Kaiba. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. they and... redo this in Season 1 later, in a later segment, like in the middle of it. It's I really like weird. it. No, yeah. I liked it. I liked it. Uh, we'll talk about it more when we get there, but I, I, I really like this idea of adapting something for a completely different rule set. 
just like yeah. taking a, just like taking a game and just making it work in a completely different setting like like uh, in, instead of turning into instead of co- turning into specialized game pieces they turn into already existing game cards yeah they by just the way you gotta say this this mind crush card is kind of fucking bullshit because like was, yeah. it re- in order for it to be at all useful it relies on you pri- having prior knowledge of your opponent's deck it's well, it's they, they it's meant for good. it's it's it meant was, for it's meant for in tournaments you play matches of two duels. Hmm. Yeah, Perfect. there's that, and uh, you don't forget people like search cards to their hand a lot, so they when they add them you could just you know say that card. True. I remember it was, but it was it's, it's a very dark specialized card still. It was used plus it's not something where you can just play it and then guess at random. No, plus no. also it was used in, in dark world. Plus, because. also in Yu-Gi-Oh, there are, uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, like there are a lot of cards that every deck plays. Mm. Like, ev- it, like, well, ev- like every deck is going to play whatever whatever the hot new draw draw card is, or whatever the hot new monster card is. Yeah, it's like, so, like, like, uh, is, say, the say, deck uh, I remember this being played in was uh, Dark World, but that deck didn't give a shit if you discarded your own cards because they all have effects that activate when you discard them. And also, they had a card that made it so you saw both players' hands, so you knew what was in your opponent's entire hand. Yep. Oh, uh, so... Okay, so here's here's an example. Uh, They released an entire box set of cards uh, based on Joey and Joey's whole whole... Deal uh, in in Duel Monsters, Joey would eventually start relying on chance cards that had like di- effects based on dice rolls and coin tosses. Mm. They there was this one card, this one old card that was kind of worthless back in the day, but in the mo- in the more in the modern game, it suddenly was really good, and they they localized it, and they would have lo- they would have banned it in tournaments, but then they thought. No, no. Let's just leave it on the on the on the legal list so the people will buy this set. And that uh, that's an example. About, that's you're talking I, about six cents. Yep, six cents. So basically, oh God, there, so there, there 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 are cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that you can just kind of know that your opponent is going to have in their deck, and mm-hmm. that's what yeah, and, that, and uh, that's that's basically what Mind Crush is for. Like if you do, if you can tell what kind of deck your opponent is playing. You'll know what their bit. You'll know what the big ace card of their deck is. Like say, yeah. if you can, t- if if, uh, if 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 uh, if your opponent has, if your opponent's drawing a lot of cards and playing a lot of monsters in defense mode or something, it's an Exodia deck. Mind Crush, get rid of Exodia. <laughs> you could just as long as you know, like remember, a lot of cards add cards to people's hands, right? So yeah, when they add them, you you know that cards in their hand, and you can just get rid of it. Yep. Because uh, when whenever your opponent searches for a card, they need to show it to you. Because how are you going to know it's a valid card to search if they don't show it to you? You got to play by yeah, the rules. They're, they're, yeah, are they cheating? <laughs> anyway, the card game the card game doesn't exist yet. Let's get back into Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, this this game was cool, and I yeah. I don't really have much to say about it. Does any? Was it, does anyone know if they rescued the other people that were trapped by Bakra, or was it they just... They did, yeah. Good. Um, they, yeah, because so there, there was that uh, that other guy... Gym te- um, that, that, that jackass gym teacher. Yeah. No, I guess just is, us. The question is, people, people end up comatose when they fucking get out of this, so it's not quite like D- Darby Jr., but... Eventually, they, like some of these people were probably going to be taken off. They're either going to be like taken off life support. They're just going to die. So what is it? Just like the rest of these souls, just like if they had, they're just they float up into the sky. Yeah, I guess they go, I guess. To, they go to heaven. Who knows? Who cares? This is this is why they don't. This is why they don't dwell on it. They don't want you to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't think about it. I mean, that's what I'm just. Dis- like the things of that, the things about this that are disappointing me are just the way that the few, that the rest of the franchise goes out. Because Zork then, looks really cool here, and oh he's yeah. just kind of also he, pull up Zork. Zork is the main antagonist of the game. 
that. Yeah, they're let's playing. let's uh, and, let's um, not talk into let's not talk into the dragon penis in the room until we get there. Uh, no, 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 but, I just, but Zork is the main antagonist of the the, 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 the RPG they're playing, right? And, and the whole franchise. Yes, and he has a Yu-Gi-Oh card based on this specific incarnation, and his effect is based on dice rolling because yep. he's based I, on the game. I appreciate this card so much more now that I've seen this, and I know, oh, so this weird effect it has with dice rolls is based on the the monster world yes. art. I get it now. Yes. Yes, I get it too, but it still sucks. It's so still anyway, so Zork's <laughs> Zork's design. I really like Zork's design in this anime. I don't like Zork's design in the card because it makes no sense to me. I cannot read this this artwork. Uh, it, it, it looks in the in the in the dual monsters artwork in the dual monsters anime, he Zork just, Zork doesn't have like a bunch of contrasting colors and shit. He's just blue, and I don't like it. And just here, he looks awesome. Like, Vakura just has an action figure of him, and it looks cool. I want that. They never made that. The main villain of Yu-Gi-Oh!, the final antagonist, and they never made it into an action figure? Come on, guys. Hmm. Anyway. Dreamers, this is not epic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, everyone loses, and when they lose, they get put into their own game pieces. Why is everyone? Lie. Why is why is there like the other the other members of our podcast are in our chat now asking? Wow, why have you guys been recording for so long? Like, for the one, how are you episodes? surprised? Yeah. yeah, we stop. Yeah, we we what we we stop making the show for a couple months and everyone forgets that the show goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We're summarizing an entire an entire season of a of a show. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, Basically, a show with a bit. Every time they lose, they get sucked into the piece, and then eventually, since Yugi gets sucked into his piece, it's okay because, you know. He's got two souls. Yeah, he's got two souls. And similarly, they suck out normal good Bakra out, and he helps them too, and then they they beat Zork in the game, yeah. and then they all get free, and he frees everyone's souls, and then Demon King Bak or Thief King, whatever, is you're like, no! What is happening? And then he loses. Yeah. And then I, yep. I don't remember what happens. He he gets sealed away until the the, the last season. Yeah, this uh, <laughs> this probably would have actually been the end of the franchise, but Shonen Jump, it, like this, Yu-Gi-Oh was the most popular thing in Shonen Jump this year, I guess. So they asked Kazuki Takahashi, "Hey, you want to just keep this going for?" Maybe, um... Well, maybe specifically the card game aspect got really popular, and when that got turned no, into an the, actual the, card game... Okay, then... so, like, so like the whole series was was very popular, but especially the card game. Yeah. Yeah, just, like, Takahashi put a lot of effort in all of the games in the series, but especially the card game, I guess, mm. is what people focus and on. Then, and then we got the movie after this, and it the was movie. Epic. The movie? The movie, the movie. Suddenly, suddenly Kaiba's back. He now has equipped with brown hair and trench coat, so he looks he got like out of his fucking coma. He's out of the coma, <laughs> well, and, no, he looks and uh, also dual monsters rules the world now. Apparently, the uh, is back to the way he should look in Duelist Kingdom, and now we're suddenly. Yep. yep. So this, so the movie, so it's only technically a movie because in Japan, movie just means budget. It has a budget. Uh, Kinda, so yeah. I guess I guess they can afford c to hire someone with who's not colorblind to design their car to redesign all the characters. Uh, everyone looks a little better in this show. Yep, yeah, everything looks yeah. better, and uh, the time is slightly longer, but not quite as long as what we typically think of as a movie. Yeah, it's, it's like thirty minutes instead of a regular episode being twenty-four. It's barely even TV movie length. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, uh, the card game is real now. This is the first piece yes. of Yu-Gi-Oh! media the made since the card game became a real, a real official card, card game. The card mm -hmm. backs are now the way they should be in every other anime, and also the rules now make sense. They're like the Konami rules yes. that we all know from Duelist Kingdom. Sort of. The, the Duelist uh, Kingdom rules. For the most part, yeah. I yeah, mean the so, card game. The card game is real now. Like the the first set of cards in in Duel Monsters in Yu Gi Oh, the official card game in real life, were like a promotional tie-in with this 
movie. Like the the yeah, first set, the first the first set is called Starter Box Theatrical Edition. You buy mm-hmm. a ticket to this movie, you get a deck of fifty cards, and th- they that's where the first two English starter decks came from. And yeah. and this this movie is cool because. It has Red Eyes Black Dragon in it, which, while it sucks, I find it so funny that they keep saying Red Eyes Black Dragon is, like, the second strongest card. And I'm sitting there, like, in the movie itself, he summons Dark Magician and Summon Skull, both of which are stronger than Red Eyes Black Dragon. No, no, no. So, <laughs> they know... not so... a good card at the time, though? No. What? Red Eyes? No, it sucks. Red, Red, Eyes, oh. Red Eyes was always a bad card because Summon Skull has more attack points and less tributes. Yeah. <laughs> So, just, so like it was legit bad. There's no reason. Yeah. To so like Ka- Kaiba shits himself because Ka- because Yugi summoned summoned a fucking weaker monster than the ones he's already summoned. Well, like and then Kaiba flips out. He's like, I gotta get that red eyes black dragon. It's so funny. And then I'm just you already have. So the but idea anyway, is that the so characters the don't the characters is, don't. So like the characters. So, like, some of the characters think the red eyes is the most powerful thing ever, second only to blue eyes. And some of the characters acknowledge that, no, red eyes kind of sucks, but you, but it goes with a lot of things, and that those yeah, are the that things that are good. It brings the potential for victory. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the so, idea was that you fuse it or do some gimmick, because Red Eyes has a lot yeah. of alt forms. Like, got, like I said, like I said, Red, 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 red Eyes... Yet, it, that'll be a thing. And yeah, like I said, red, red, eye, red eyes, black Yeah, stuff. like I said, red eyes is the card on the fu- is the the monster on the fusion card. It's Yeah. It is the it is the dragony looking guy being mixed together with the demon looking guy on polymerization's artwork. Yes. Hmm. Because red eyes black dragon goes well red eyes black dragon is like a sauce you put it on a lot of things and it makes the things good. Yeah, there you go. That's perfect. Yes. I guess red eyes, red eyes, red eyes, black dragon. It's like ketchup. And because it's, I, it's, wa- I play, it's a lot really, of it's, it's really not good by itself. But if you put it on a hamburger, it'll be really good. Um, uh, because yes. I played a shit ton of Yu-Gi-Oh. As soon as he summoned Meteor Dragon, I'm like, oh shit, I know what's happening. And then he fused them together. I was like, yeah. Yep, and uh, <laughs> it is it is just, like, I hadn't realized it until I actually watched this movie just now. This is the first time a fusion... Fusion is a big trope in, in Japanese animation. Like, they, they really like things... They really like cool things fusing together and becoming no, more thing and becoming new things. But here, Yu-Gi-Oh! has not employed that trope until this moment, and, like... I mean, they fucked it up by it being Meteor Dragon and not and not Black Skull Dragon, but it, I, I, it's cool. Well, Black I Skull Black... Dragon was the first one in the manga, just not this. Yeah, well, it, it's really cool. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah. I really like this movie because it yep, it kind good. of bridges the gap between the Toei yep. series and the the Jewel Monsters series in that. You know, a lot of the things are more like Jewel Monsters, but still in a very recognizably yep. original series way. Um, yep, uh, a lot of a lot of the element, a lot of the unique elements of this movie were either taken from or ta- or put into later later things. Like a lot yeah. of scenes from Jewel Monsters were based on this movie. A lot of scenes from Battle City were taken from this movie, uh, and anything that wasn't taken from this movie. Uh, they got from other places. Like this is a very, this is a very good movie, especially for adapting stuff, because yeah. it's an original plot, but it remixes existing content and it's remixed into that content. And you go is a very interesting franchise. We're gonna have fun here. We're gonna have fun here. Yep. We're gonna have fun here. Catapult, fucking turtle. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Also, there's a guy in the movie who gets some red eyes cars, and he's like, "I'm the coolest, but I don't want to play." <laughs> and then by the uh, end, yeah. he ends, I want to play. Uh, yeah, yeah, we didn't talk like about him at all because 
if I lo- he gets the red eyes, and he's like, well, now I can I, win. I fucking hated I, this character, honestly. Oh, yeah, same, he's, same. He's, 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 a, he's a bitch. So he's basically like, I yeah, stuck in the video, and then he gets, and then he gets red eyes, and he's like, now I won, and he's like, as long as I don't lose to anyone, I can still say I'm the best because I have red eyes. And yeah, so this, like, wow, this, you're yeah. a bitch. And then so this Joey, kid Joey's refuses. Like, Joey's like, stop being a bitch, and then he wins. <laughs> yeah, Yugi, Yugi wins all the time. Yugi wins. Dual discs. Yeah, oh yeah, they did have dual discs in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, um. So the most one of the most obvious. Uh. Well, there there are a lot of things in this movie that obviously went into the later incarnations of the franchise. The dual disc, like the the duel itself, it like it became the uh, Yugi's duel with Kaiba on the towers of the castle with the dual discs in in Duelist Kingdom. It'll make sense for anyone who doesn't know what that is next time. Yeah. But for now, <laughs> it's a thing. And uh, red eyes obviously enters into the next iteration of the franchise the character who originally has red eyes in duel in the duelist in the duel monster series uh is a background character in this yes rex raptor like, shows yeah up. i like, noticed that the homages the homages and references are extreme here rex raptor is just and also mean by kaiba then he runs away and i'm yep. like okay so so and also uh red eyes becomes the primary folk for the primary card that joey uses this movie is the first time in the franchise we see joey playing in the card game and he he takes red eyes from the background the most prominently featured background character from this movie it's like, god damn, it's very meta. They they may not be able to they may not be able to release this to the public, but they did their best to homage it as much as they can. It's pretty epic. I liked it. Neat. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good. And I would give season 0 a solid uh, good out of good. Yeah. Like, uh, good. Yep. Here's the thing. I fucking season 0 makes me retroactively like Duel Monsters less. Just Aww. because fucking Yami Yugi is so much more badass in this series, and in Duel Monsters, from what I remember of it, he's basically just been relegated to Diet Coke Shazam, because they I took mean, away all the shit that made him interesting, and a lot of his pow- one, his one power to create like illusions and shit is all now pushed over to a thing that Kaiba made with holograms. Yeah. Well, see... It's true. Th- that power wasn't unique to Yugi, so really, who cares? Yugi's I mean, I unique, guess, but at the same time, it gives him less that he can do, and now he's just a tall boy who's good at games. Look, look I agree with you. Pants? I agree with you. It really, it it'll, it really doesn't make any sense that Yugi turns into another guy when he plays card games until you watch this or the read the manga, like, and then you realize turns into this big fancy boy when he gives punishment to people who deserve punishment yeah. but punishment is no longer the you know lessons being learned and shit that's no longer the theme of the series yeah it's all yami about yugi selling those cards now yeah <laughs> yami yugi makes a lot more sense before duelist kingdom starts it, it really was it, um, it really was you know topical in the beginning of the um, season 0 bridge a good point was made season 0 was not about selling shit if, yeah. So it could tell its own story, and it didn't need to be restricted to that. Yep. Season one of Duel Monsters, it was all about those cards. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of telling that the boss monster that Pegasus, the main antagonist of season one, uses, is which called... by the way was just a relegation of many of Kaiba's character traits into a different mm-hmm. character. So the boss monster that he uses is named Thousand Eyes Restrict. <laughs> and his his whole his whole deal is that he put he he pushes y- Yugi into a little box and Yugi doesn't have room to play anymore. <laughs> and then the fra- and then the the franchise just goes on for another four seasons. I guess yeah. Uh, speaking of actually, the the fact that the the show becomes about selling cards. A uh, fun fact about that is that in the Japanese version, the um the cards look exactly as they do in real life. But in the four kids version, they actually edited the cards to look different. 
because if yeah. they looked exactly like the real life cards, it would be classed as an advert, and they'd have to pay extra like uh, fees to get it shown wow. on TV. Then yep. they edited a lot of things. Like I watched a quick side by side comparison of some things from the four kids version the other day, and like you hear a lot of things about how much four kids edits these shows, but. You it doesn't really sink in until you see them side by side, where they got things like shattered glass turning into lava, saw blades turning into like glowing balls of after effects, <laughs> yep. and the fucking guns on Barrel Dragon painted green and blue and turned into laser. Yep. You'll be shooters. you'll be happy like, to know though. Fun? You'll be happy to know. Th- You'll be happy to know, though, Liam, that uh, Konami recently has been doing this thing where they release lost art versions of old cards. Well, I am aware that they made the four kids version of fucking Barrel Dragon an actual card now. <laughs> what? That's not what I was saying at all. Well, I was playing Duel Links the other day, and there was a version of Barrel Dragon that I picked up that had the fucking laser cannons. Yes. yes, they made they made that card. I don't know which card. The retrain of Barrel Dragon. <sighs> no, I mean, I mean they've been re they've been reissuing yeah. older cards with unedited with uncensored artwork. Recently. Yes, they've been doing that too. Yeah, that's what they've I been doing that. Referring to. They haven't they haven't done I that with Barrel they Dragon. Even censored the actual cards. Oh, oh no, they, they oh no they they do. All changes they made on Barrel Dragon were also made in real life too. Huh. Yeah, uh, so uh, they haven't released the original Barrel Dragon card yet, but uh, they're probably going to because they some of the first of, some of the first uh, reissues they did were of uh, violence cards and religious they also, cards. They also uh, released. Uh, did you know that they released the American version of uh, Monster Born in Japanese as a collector's yep. item? Yep. And uh, they, that art, it, even in Japan, is more popular than the original yep. art. But then again, I don't blame them because the original art is literally an. Onk. The original, the original art, the original art for Monster Born is just a weird, just an onk, and it's kind of boring. The new one doesn't make. I don't know what the hell it's supposed to be in the new one, but it's more interesting. Some of these, yeah. t- sometimes censorship, sometimes censorship leads breeds creativity. Other times, they just. Uh, Make you oh do god, finger guns. there's other shit too. I just remembered from like this again. The comparison, it's like there's one episode where Kaiba's like on a cross or something, and they just stretched out the object so that it was more like a plank. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, that'll be that'll be um, that that'll be an homage to Monster World it, that in uh, season one. Jesus Christ. You'll, you'll like, see. I almost want to do, like, uh, I almost want to watch, like, both the sub and the dub for this show. Good. If there was <laughs> ever time for it, just to be like, you know, spot the differences and <laughs> 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 funny, funny joke. Yeah. Well, I suppose we'll we'll get to uh, Dual Monsters and all that eventually uh, next time. But for now, I think we should really wrap the episode where we are. My uh, grandfather's de- my grandfather's dick has no pathetic semen kaiba, it, but it does have <laughs> but it does have the unstoppable shrinkage. <laughs> oh god <laughs> damn it. <laughs> no. Oh dear. Um yes, this was Yu-Gi-Oh. We'll be doing more of that soon. But for now, uh, goodbye, everyone, and stay tuned to the Beaver House because there's more stuff coming. Uh, why the hell soon. is Why the hell is Craig's avatar a fox, a bear, a, a furry, some kind of furry? What the fuck? <laughs> the big bear. You're just you know did you do that? that? Did you? I do don't that? know why. You've I don't been know why. On this show for two years now, and you're just now noticing this, Liam. I don't normally look at the help. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, see you all uh, soon. Um, uh, and like yeah. I said, stay tuned to the Beaver House because we got Gathered Crew. That's happening as well. A new episode of that oh, coming God, up pretty I, soon. I, thought you, I didn't know you were doing these simultaneously. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, I, th- thought I'm you, still I thought you specifically scheduled this for recording at this point in time because this is when you were planning on finishing Gathered Crew. No, you just said, uh, let's start it. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> oh. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, uh, uh anyway, uh get, 
Yep. Well, let me know, let me know when Nami's tits start getting start getting bigger than her head. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's already happened. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know how far you guys were because I haven't been watching. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm literally, not, I don't like all One Piece, and I haven't seen the thing either yet. So I, I, I will say, yeah. like immediately uh, at the at the start of the material that we're covering in the next episode of Gathered Crew, uh, that's when it happens. I guess yeah. that makes up for the lack of Levi in this show because he's in another one. Exactly, I mean, we, it's like symbolic or something. I wish my tits would suddenly get bigger than my head. That would. That, I would love big. Big titties are good. Yep, titty good. See, titty we good. brought it all around to, to breast expansion. Yeah, just we brought to, it like, all. Start of the episode. Yep, yep, yep. Those titties are so long they go. They, you, all around.